Hydro Peel cuts through my neighborhood. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Fearlessly Authentic. Tonight, we have Snork in the house. <laughs> and we have Miss Shelly. Can you hear us, Shelly? Oh, I don't hear her. You can hear her. Whoa, I hear buzzing. How about that? That's better. Now I can hear you. How is okay. it? How is it sounding? Sound good to you, Stork? Yeah, sounds good. Awesome. So how is everybody? <laughs> Feeling different, you know? That's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> We stayed up like all night last night, and uh, you know we were, we were awake when that when the, they they started the the craziness and letting the Mormons and and <laughs> they turned it on around five a.m. and we you know we felt the Mormons presence around five fifteen. It might have been. I don't know if that's true at all. In hand, it could have been. Could have been. Completely implied. <laughs> so anybody who hasn't met Snork, Snork, you should give a little intro and like your background because, you know, I call you my brain melter. Um, I think that covers it. Yeah. He's yeah. a brain melter. Yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm a teacher out in Iowa. I uh, used to work uh, in the Chicago area um, building different types of factories and supporting and uh, developing uh, different types of processes. Excellent. Well, there you go. You have yeah. a marmot behind you. Don't, 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 startle <laughs> it. don't startle it. Just uh, back away slowly. <laughs> um, so, are you? You're. You currently teach like what kind of stuff, Snore? Because like electronics, engineering, and robots. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, you know, like way more than I could imagine. And uh, yeah, and that is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. A lot of stuff. Um, and Shelly, what what do you have going on over there? Like, <laughs> <laughs> for instance, <laughs> seen any UFOs today? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. yeah, not today. No. <laughs> No marmots. No, no, no marmots. Yeah. No marmots in the sky. <laughs> they are cute creatures. They really are. They, are. they get uh, they get misrepresented as groundhogs all the time. So I mean, I think that's unfair. Yeah, they do look a lot like groundhogs. So. They do. They do. They're cousins. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah I look. You look. Like, you look like your cousin over there. Shut up! Your cousin is a woodchuck. Oh my god. Yeah, I think they're also cousins to squirrels. Yeah, I would imagine. Definitely in the weasel uh family and the uh you know surrounding peripheral gene pool. So I don't know if, if everybody knows what we're talking about when we're talking about the, the CERN being turned back on. You should give them the lowdown. I, I'm I have, not really that concerned because I don't think that's the biggest one. No, that's no, the, no. The I know just, there's. I know they built a giant one in um, China some years ago. Uh -huh. Usually, we but don't it was know like about the big ones. But it was oh. like much bigger than um, the LHC, and uh, that's what we know about. Yeah, um, it, it's it normally uh, like when everybody was going to have that great big rush on uh, uh, Area 51. Um, yep. I just thought, you know, <laughs> don't broadcast a location like that if you're really doing anything real. Oh, no. And, uh, <clears throat> mostly you would not know. It would be right beside you and you would not know. 
Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like they're they they're 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 acting as though it, what's happening isn't a big deal at all. But they make it you know, like, like they, they get you used to like the idea of this kind of thing. Oh yeah, it's fine. They're not doing anything. Don't worry about it. And then we have like, right. you know, shootings around the country and, and no. things like that, that happen. And it's like, wait, well, what are they, what's really happening behind? Not that those other things aren't important, but what are they focusing our, our intention and attention onto? Like, yeah, but I, I really see it as Europe's, um, trying to have a second uh, answer. So if we have something, I'm not saying I know we have anything, but if we have something, we're probably not sharing. Right. Uh, and if we're not sharing, uh, the Europeans are probably trying to make sure that they're included as well by having their own. It, I, I feel like we go into very dangerous territory with this and, and suddenly like, you know, being in competition and, and having such big amounts of, of, of power and control over what, I mean, this is just what we're allowed to know about. Well, the, uh, the Department of Energy actually does not have to answer to the president. If the president wants to do nuclear anything, he actually has to have the uh, uh, Department of Energy's approval for right. uh, using a high, highly technical. They are completely above his grade in in security uh they don't have to answer to him or anything if they they're asked uh they have to uh hold back information in case he's compromised so, so I, again uh if you're worried about anything from from the lhc it is probably going on elsewhere do you know what the largest american held uh um uh group of bison is used for the bison? No. Largest group of a bison in the United States is for Fermilab. And they're sprinkled up above it in case there's an accident so they know when the bison die. What? I'm not making that up. Oh, wait. My God. That is so, wait, that's say so that again? Up. They're <laughs> Above, above uh, Fermilab, there is a huge herd of bison. And that's in case something goes wrong. They see bison die and they know to Something's really bad. Something leaked. That's yeah. insane. They're the canaries right. in They're like the, the coal mine. Giant woolly canaries. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You, you can Google that right now and see that it's truthful. Oh, I believe you. Yeah, I, I believe it as well because I've heard other things that were very similar to what yeah. you just said. Yeah. So I believe that. How do I true. even? I wouldn't even know like what to like. Well, Google a uh, largest herd of bison. Fermi Lab. <laughs> yeah. You know, since you mentioned it, um, there's like scientists, like physicists uh, at like Cornell University and the University of Kansas that work with CERN as well and work on the Large Hadron Colliders. And they have their own programs going on and they are all mm -hmm. under the Department of Energy. Who knows what is like black budget stuff going on. Well, that's, that's the thing that freaks me out is like, okay, all of these things are on the surface and you can see that we're, you know, we're a bunch of Muppet fucking scientists doing all this fucking weird Muppet laboratory shit with, you know, smashing fucking subatomic particles together at fucking high rates of speed. And, you know, whatever happens about that, you know, whatever. That's, isn't that basically what our fucking universe is fucking premised to have done? It's just a big explosion on that level. And now we have a universe. So we're just making little tiny universes in, in tunnels under the ground across the world in bigger and bigger circles. Yeah, and, now they're... <laughs> No, so we could point to things that, that look big, like attractions uh, that get drawn to people. And sorry, I'm I'm, I'm such a, uh, a, a, a what do you call it, party pooper, but I really <laughs> don't view it as uh, <laughs> people are being dr driven to concerns when there's other really far worse things, like you just said, the shootings and things like that. And oh, yeah. when when the shootings occur. 
uh, the weird stuff seems to come out of the closet. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and- it definitely has like a culminative effect. The weirder, the more, the more heinous and crazy s- some kid is killing people than some other weird little tidbit that nobody was really paying attention to fucking gets on the radar. Like everybody, uh, like I, I agree. I don't think you're being a party pooper. I think you're just being a, a realist about it. But I agree that there are so many other things occurring all the time constantly that we're unaware of that are probably equally or more dangerous than smashing subatomic particles together. You know what I'm saying? There's probably for that one little fucking scary thought, there's, there's a thousand other ones that are like that hit closer to home and, you know, and poisons and air particulate and all just all this carcinogens flying around the planet and everybody fucking living and breathing in it. You know, I think those but things I mean, are just as valid as like, <laughs> this is kind of weird. That's all I'm saying. They're just it. adding to it. They're adding to like, we're already stressed out system, our entire system, our people are. And when I say our people, I mean, just the people, you know, and of the planet, like people are so stretched, so thin right now. It's like any little thing is going to be the last it feels like everything is going to be the last straw and everything's going to be the last straw but the last straw never it, it's just not i kind of had that feeling since i was 19 that oh it's just speeding up everything's getting fucking exponentially worse at all times and just more and more and more and more and more and, and it's never going to stop and it just gets worse and it's the fucking snowball downhill and there is no respite from it whatsoever. It's just that's how yeah. things have seemed since I was a teenager. <laughs> a real good example is to hide uh, the first nuclear reaction that we did. Not not the first bomb, but the first time we, we did a nuclear reaction. They didn't know yeah. if it would blow up a, a large area or not. They wanted to keep it secret. Where do you think they did it? Nevada. <laughs> no. Underneath nope. the stadium. The main stadium in Chicago. Oh, lovely! I'm sure wow. that didn't have any. I'm sure that didn't have any ill effects on the on the civilian population. Yeah. What the hell? So usually it's done in some area that you won't won't even. Um, you know, I've I've heard of uh, places that the, the people working there uh, have mm-hmm. no clue. I mean, they, people might actually be working in the same office with a different job and the other person doesn't know that they're, they're working at a different facility underneath it. Right. Yeah. So compartmentalized like the Manhattan project. Yeah. But my, my big concern about CERN or the large Hadron collider is, um, a, the amount of energy it takes just to run it. And they upgraded. It's like something like 10 times the magnetic force of the earth. And they upgraded it. Be, to use like that, that's even nice more high too, where I feel like the news wants us to be upset yeah, about that yeah. we're not working with something else. So I could pick up this <clears throat> and the actual density of this is over forty or fifty thousand times the what? magnetic field. So I mean reporting this without reporting the 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 things around it um, right. wow don't don't actually matter don't put this near your wallet <laughs> right don't put it near electronics and shit but yeah but like I mean, wh- what are the other effects of running that thing on the, on the environment like well you hear about the large hadron collider but you don't hear about the small hadron collider yeah. uh That's what I'm saying. there's a bunch which, of hadron yeah colliders. they're all they're all over the world <laughs> And I know there was that one that they started building in Texas in the 80s, but they just ended construction before it was built. I can't remember <laughs> what kind of... Cl- think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's I, actually well, the yeah, testing ground under Dallas now. You know? <laughs> well, there's conspiracy theories that like that was just uh, like a cover and they were like secret. There was like... There's some kind of conspiracy theory how it was still running. I don't know. It was a long time ago. But... Um, I, I worked at one plant where we figured that 97% of the orders we were given from a certain location were were um, 
red herrings that <laughs> didn't really do anything. They just wanted to have people looking at them to get so frustrated and just give up looking. <laughs> well, uh, my mom. That's why, I, that's why we know where Area 51 is, is because they want us to focus on that area. Yeah, yeah. I mean. <laughs> Well, in the 80s and the, under the Reagan administration, there was a lot of money pumped into military like supplies and projects and stuff like that that were just, it was just a boondoggle. All that stuff sat in storage doing nothing. So that was probably, I think it was probably more likely to be something like that than some well, cover. So many things that weren't like classified or anything that were done. Like we wanted to brain drain the ability for uh, other countries to take anybody with knowledge. We wanted them all coming here. So in order to get all the Indian scientists to come here, we, we actually made a thing where if you wanted to buy a hotel, you wanted to buy a restaurant, anything, it was an excuse to get doctors and uh, scientists over here. We were buying people hotels and restaurants just yep. so that we could uh, drain the world of all their, all their uh, expertise. I know a kid whose dad was a professor in India, and they did exactly that. They came over and bought this beautiful fucking, uh, this beautiful like plaza with the restaurant in it, and uh, and like a little motel, you know, in, in in like rural Vermont or something. I think it was Vermont or New Hampshire. It was right on the line, and uh, they did really well, like the. The dad worked at the at the school forever, and I, I think it was uh, UMass is where he was teaching. But they like that was like an incentivized thing to get people to move and to be part of things. Yeah. Even when we were laying off uh, engineers at at uh, uh, NASA because the Apollo shut down, we were still bringing all these people in because we just wanted to starve the rest of the world of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, so they're, they're, why do they want to come here? <laughs> like it's a hellhole. Like this is yeah, but it, literally a failed then, state it now. So that then it was like, not viewed as a failed state, right? And they were offered a lot of incentives. Yep. Yep. I'm not talking about minor stuff. Then so, why don't I don't understand why they wouldn't? Why it wouldn't be the goal to to make the people that like are from this country the smart people you know what i mean and, and well, that's educate ultimately the people. what they were trying to do was just eliminate spreading knowledge across the planet and just try to fucking pigeonhole it all into our camp and fuck all you people it's just it's it's always it's just that more of that more me 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 that me first I'm me now you know like yeah it, and think about all the science they worked on that is like uh, corporate secret or classified that we'll never fucking know about. Yep. And that's so greedy. It's so damn greedy. It's the scary part oh, of it, really, is just the unknown, even, that, that dark part of it. Sorry. A lot is even classified. Because when, yeah. when it's classified, it has to be under the control of, of uh, the classification system and Congress. If it's not classified, it's not under congressional review. So a lot of times uh, uh, you know, engineers will be talking casually uh, on working on projects. And uh, there are conferences that, that people can go to where you can uh, bring up different projects you'd like to get funded. Uh, and then they'll, they'll kick them around and see if it's something viable. And they also put out uh, a, a listing. Uh, I, I think because of the last two years of being COVID, they haven't done it. But there used to be national tours where they'd come around and, and there would be uh, listings of things that, that were going to be um, stuff that different scientists could, could bid on across the country. Wow. That's, that's crazy. Of, that's kind of cool, you know. It's behind the scenes. Way, way like, to do that. We that's, don't know all that that's happening. Yeah, we don't get to see it. Yeah. Still, yeah. It's still to us, you know, just general public, it's still classified or censored. It's still. No, no. no. In it's fact, still. A lot of it's way around. This is the part where it's, it hasn't got, uh, doesn't have the technical information at that point usually to to duplicate it. And this is part of a, um, a, a, a transfer between business and uh, industry. And it, it's actually quite open. In fact, uh, one thing that we didn't think really should have been out in the open was when uh, we're talking about, our, we went into bid on flechettes 
um, uh, you know, weapons from the sky. Uh, and um, the uh, George Bush um, declassified uh, all of the information uh, that we had the ability to wipe out all, all cities in Europe in 12 hours. Uh, and that was right before they made the uh, announcement that Europe will back us in going into Iraq. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was classified at one point. Just, uh, well, just that, so that you know. Those, usually, yeah. usually those meetings, it was brought up in that meeting because those meetings are attended by other people, not not classified people. I mean, you know, people like me, no, no classification. Right. Well, That's then more of them need to be talking more publicly about this stuff. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Maybe and, that's uh, what it is. Like maybe like fear for their careers and stuff. I don't know. Well, I, I don't mean, know why. Think about, think about the 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 you know our country as a whole. Like most people are at a sixth grade reading level. Most people aren't really. You know what I mean? Like when half of our population, like when it's slowly like everybody's been like just you know, to, to say it and, you know, dumb d down, you know, like, and, 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 and every possible way that they could possibly dumb the people down, get the people to conform, get the, you know, but yet they have, and they do these things all out in the open. Like, like we should know about this. This should be something that is celebrated that we that you can go and share all these ideas and and talk with you know leading leading people in the field and and see if there's funding for things but it's 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 like a well it's its own there are club, so many things that are contradicting that look like they're one way portrayed by one way and mass media makes you seem like you're stupid if you don't go along with the wrong thing Right. And also, in, in order for us to get through grade school, high school, um, we have to kind of change how we teach. Uh, and we don't really, we're not really able to give all of the exceptions when we're talking about what's going on. So we start off with what's water. Well, we, we say H2O, right? right. And, um, but what is H2O? So there are seven known variations of hydrogen and several variations of 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 uh, oxygen there's only <laughs> one set that's really conducive to working inside the body uh if you get uh the, the second one it stops your your uh, dna from being able to unravel and re-ravel correctly the third one kills it uh the other ones are volatile so um it's uh um it's very nuanced <laughs> between right. them. So it's not yeah. well brought up. Right. Uh, everybody's, you know, you're, you're talking about the safest thing you could do for fuel. Well, uh -huh. if you're going to use hydrogen fuel for all your cars going around sputtering about, should you be filtering out the bot stuff? They might say on one point, no, there's not that much that goes out per hit. But if mm -hmm. a million vehicles go by your door every day, is it starting to be a problem? So uh, we don't always... We can't always go over all of the of things that are important. And, and in fact, there is a question that most um, chemical engineers get wrong on their final exams. And um, it, it deals with, uh, does the shape of an object uh, matter how, fa how fast it falls? And uh, because if it's a balloon in the air, it's going to fall different than a balloon in the water. Sure. So a lot of people forget by buoyancy because all through grade school, they're taught, ignore um, the atmosphere. And you get so used to the quick quick definitions that you've done with the shortcuts that uh, it's, it's usually later that you start to realize that you have to start putting back in what the true exceptions are. Uh, and a lot of things that seem like it's so simple, so simple. I mean, it, if you look at a human, uh, human uh, themselves, we, we should be doing something in a straightforward fashion and we should all be doing it correct. How many people make a mistake? How many people purposely make a mistake? And how many people make a mistake because something else happened to them while they were doing it? And all of these things that uh, pop in are not accounted for. So when we look at, hey, we should go to completely a communist system because uh, capitalism is so bad. When, when we actually look at the ancient 
communist systems? Why did they fa fail? Why did they fail so horribly? Why, why were they so valid? Why did they mostly turn to cannibalism? And if we look at mostly uh, true capitalism system, which really isn't that different from monarchy, right? I know uh, the experts in, in that are gonna tell me I'm wrong because that's not my field. But if we go too far to capitalism, it turns into one person and owning everything, making all the rules. And oh, we, need, we need somewhere in between. Uh, you know, that's why I like Ben Franklin's idea of uh, everybody can own things, but the things that are public need to be owned by the public. So that's kind of like halfway between. So, you know, I, I can't have um, I can't have EMTs on 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 site and only pay for the people to get sick. Because anybody can be get sick, and we want that to be able to be used at any time. So yeah, that, that should be public. Uh, fire department. <coughs> Uh, I, I still think we need a police force because it's not a perfect, uh, because people are involved. Um, you know, and it's different by where you go. Uh, a lot like there are places like in Germany where if there's a stop sign out in the middle of a field and no cars are within 50 miles, they will stop and wait until they've properly gone to the stop sign and move again. Whereas people from some theoretical country like uh, California might slow down. <laughs> mm -hmm. and so we don't always follow our rules and if we followed our rules these alternate systems might might work so and realistically when when does a when does and uh i wouldn't say company or, or when does a group change to communism they change to communism usually when monarchy or whatever financial system they have has completely excluded them yep so our main our main thing is we we need something where everybody is included and has a pathway to being at least toward the middle. And originally our tax system only taxed the extremely wealthy people to keep them from getting too far ahead. You know, even up until <laughs> it's, um, everything's backwards. <laughs> yeah, even up until Kennedy's time, um, the very large income <laughs> were mostly taxed. And, um, you know, the, the main thing that uh, Truman, or not Truman, Roosevelt wanted to do was be able to break up the big monopolies. You know, that was a, a major, major issue with them. And we're still not able to break up all the monopolies, and they're growing. Uh, and then during the 90s, I can remember so many really vile um, uh, business streets where mm -hmm. I, I remember one politician came in and would buy a company, uh, merge it with another company, sell everything that the, the company had, and then keep the money that can go on and buy another one. Mm -hmm. The worst thing was when he bought the company, he made all of the all of the employees buy shares in the company. And then he took the money out, took his money out, sold it back to them, and then left them without the resources that it originally had. And then that company was that is and, shady. And that was very popular. And I'm I'm having problems with the chat. It won't let me in. <laughs> I've done something wrong. I'm in chat hell. And <laughs> oh no. <laughs> happens that, to the best of is us. Is that on YouTube? Is that what the one you're talking about? That's oh uh, no, I'm I'm in. Oh, maybe that's why I can't get into that because I'm in. I'm not in YouTube. I'm on Streamyard. Yeah, you got to be in the. Yeah. You got to be in the YouTube or the you know wherever we are, we stream to Odyssey and Rumble and YouTube. So any when one you of take a break, I'll switch it in so I don't have to worry about you know, switching over the sound. <laughs> so speaking of speaking of the '90s, I remember going to Manhattan for a school trip and seeing the uh, the national debt ticker there national yep. debt clock and it was a national surplus yes i remember seeing that like i that was a very tiny snapshot in time where you could have seen that in person yep. and I, I i saw it <laughs> very tiny you can't, you can't you can't talk to someone who lived through the clinton era that doesn't say you balanced the budget you know you, you had a surplus yeah you but know, he like also that. got rid of uh 
Yeah. He got rid of welfare. He uh, he got rid of fucking all the jobs, man. He fucking, uh, he tanked us. Oh, what the oh, hell? Just was about that? single-handedly. NAFTA. Uh, uh, Glass Eagle. He reversed Glass yes. Eagle. Like he. There is a reason why there is no national debt for a very brief time. And it was right after he pulled all that shit. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> but it was, it was more I, I of can, a bait. There was, I look can, here while I'm doing this over here. Yeah. Yeah. More but of that same. At least I could say I saw it. <laughs> yes. My bone is in the wrong yard, is in the chat. I guess I don't understand the statement. <laughs> I'm not sure what that meant. Wait a second. Wait, what happened? And why are why are people commenting about Snork's bone anyway? Oh no! Wait, phone. What? <laughs> what did I miss? What did you see? Wrong, the wrong yard. <laughs> wrong yard. Yeah. Uh, I wonder what that was in reference to. I don't know. Snork, <laughs> Snork's milkshake. Bring all the girls to the yard. <laughs> oh, from Aram. Aram. <laughs> Aram, are you causing problems? At we 942. Love you. Oh, dissenting little so and so. He said uh he said today that that uh Graham Elwood and Jordan Sheridan both at the same time are complaining or or case casting those who were hating on them for unsubscribing and doing so over one thing. On the same day, they're both complaining about the same thing. I wonder if they must have had a mm. conversation. Weird. Hmm. I know Graham, Graham seems more like Jordan. Yeah, I don't. Day. I don't watch his stuff I or can't. participate. Graham Elwood has been blocked on YouTube. Um, I'm surprised he <laughs> he's one of the grown ass men that has me blocked because I am such a threat by you know asking questions. Just settle down, young lady. <laughs> God. Dress her up, can't take her nowhere. <laughs> you can't dress me up. Either. No, I can't. I also see so many things about the CIA. <clears throat> and I view the CIA as the whipping post where if they want an excuse and keep some other organization from getting their name mentioned, they blame it on mm -hmm. the CIA. Because that's all yeah. the people know about. They just think there's FBI, CIA, and nothing else. Right. And uh, so, like the, the organization over the president, I think, is the CFO. How many, uh, how many, uh, like, Homeland Security related uh, the Defense Department <laughs> uh, agencies are there like that in our government? There must There's... be. Last I knew was only something like twenty seven or twenty nine. Really? Last I checked, there was it said seventeen intelligence agencies in the U.S. government, but I think that was from like six or seven years ago. Yeah, I, uh, I well, doubt, the CFO I didn't doubt start that. Like 2004. I mean, in unless like there's, the, unless I'm sorry, unless there's like there, there are groups that just are not called anything, and they're just not a, they don't acknowledge that's a thing. Well, yeah, black ops type shit, like. Well, that's what I mean. That they're just they, you know, people think like, they, well, the CIA doesn't have to report to anyone. Well, they do. Well, they, they, there's a hierarchy of play a, there as well. They usually go by a company name, so they'll they'll yes. have a. But not even a, that. Maybe a corporate got, name instead of a. Yeah, company. well, not even that. It's just like all the agencies have intelligence units to some yes. degree. Like even Social Security has, you know, people scanning, you know, social media to like try to prove that somebody's not really disabled and shit. Like they all they have do. their yes. they all have their version of intelligence. So it's like they, they will send it. someone to spy on people to see yep. if they think yeah. that they are they are scamming the system. Like it's the dude like, who would follow Ricky's dad around trailer park. And what are contact tracers? Yeah, and there's so many people. There's so many other organizations tracking us that it's unbelievable. <laughs> so like their organization uh, the, the Catholics choose or constantly are looking for anything that might be popped up on them. The, right. uh, uh, the or Jewish organizations. There's one Jewish organization that looks just looks for people who are burying uh, uh, telephone power and uh, other cables underground. What? And uh, well, the, the area is called a roofs. If they don't have the, the the wire, they can't go outside. So mm. they're trying to 
make more access. Like, so they claim it as a um, they claim it as a religious uh, problem if if you take away their wires. Right. And uh, there are areas in, in in New York City that actually have very small wires all around them. When they take the power lines down, or they didn't have power lines anymore. They had to put right. these wires up and they maintain. But uh, so there are many other organizations. If you have a large multi-million or almost billion dollar organization, you can bet that you're looking out to say, hey, if I'm a Boy Scout, is anybody saying anything bad about the Boy Scouts today? Huh. No. And then that, there's all the corporate espionage and it's all intertwined too. It's just like, it, there's really no such thing as privacy. That's what I mean. They compartmentalize everything but within that, you know what I mean? There's so, so many like agencies watching the other agencies, watching the other agencies and, and so on and so forth. Like this, these, these never ending networks. And I mean, and, and uh, how coordinated is it? Is it really matrices. organized and coordinated or is it like kind of like a haphazard? Like, oh yeah. Whoa. It seems like there's Mostly a surveillance on everything. Because they believe that they don't want the other one knowing what they're doing. So they right. don't want to yeah. share. So there's there are organizations that have agreements on what they will share, like Five Eyes, where where they say if we see something, we're going to say everything. No, there's no way we're saying everything. Well, it's like just look at the Epstein case and all <laughs> all the uh, videos and photos and stuff that they took out of that place that the mm-hmm. FBI did, and then poof, what happened to it? We we Nothing. we haven't heard. They're just using it. To, as for counter intelligence against whatever intelligence agency was running that operation. Yeah. I mean, ob- it seems obvious there's cases yeah. upon cases of fucking hard drives and things, you know, like how come nobody's charged with anything? It's just, oh, it's, it's just Lane. She's, she's awful. Yeah. Her and R. Kelly, throw them in prison. Just get rid of them. And all the rest of the stuff will go. All the rest of the stuff will just go away collectively. Doing Hoover proud, (laughs) right? Um, There might be more involved in R. Kelly than we know. Oh, Um, probably. Yeah, I probably. There's probably a reason why they had to put him on a suicide watch. They probably want him dead. Well, yeah, I think he just has he has juice on lots of other people, just like fucking Maxwell. You know what I mean? In the same way, he was allowed to do what he did for fucking 30 fucking years, man. He was he's been like a scumbag that everybody knew about for 30 years. And how does it off? And then he gets arrested like after everybody's like, oh, no, you're all set. And and then then he has to go on with fucking Gail King and and be uh I don't know, man. That's it's just so disgusting how fucking flagrantly um, pedophilic and and all of these these really gross things that are attached to what these people have done. You know what I mean? Like and how it's just like, oh, well, it's just so and so and they're going to go to jail. And like, no, you realize that, you know, these people preyed on actual human beings. You know what I mean? They're fucking. They, they, well, did, there's they did terrible things is... and, and committed like these crimes that why aren't the rest of the people who fucking paid for that shit being even talked about in the road? You know what I mean? Because that's what it is. It's just like, well, that the... game of fucking espionage, you know, like who can who has the fucking upper hand on who? And it's, um, it's because it's because we live in a world where it's reactionary. It's not, there's nothing preventative that ever, you know, like things aren't preventatively like protect your children. So this doesn't happen. It's no, it's a reaction to this did happen. Now we have to react to it. It's, it's, I feel like we're living in a, in the Truman show in real life. Like it, it really, really feels like that. Like it's a constant cycle of, of like filtering and if you even care to pay attention you it's a constant cycle of filtering out where the truth is what i mean imagine if we just knew we could just know the truth and be aware of things and how much that would change things for people like if we could make it where people couldn't lie anymore like people just they do it like they breathe now it's it's it is part of 
like society as a whole where we're lying is just <laughs> a normal thing normal to lie and manipulate and 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 steal and 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 hurt others and it, and then there's the the ones of us that are like wait a minute this is not okay this isn't okay and then we have just the masses just going along with it and it's like i i don't I don't know where we what we do to break that cycle of constantly being reactionary to everything and constantly having to like filter through everything and figure out where the truth really lies. Like how much time do we take focused on that? And then it's like and then we have to even look at it as okay, well where do they want our attention to be? Where do they want our attention to be? Where do they want us looking? And why do they want us looking there and not over here at this? And, you know, it's just so much time is put into trying to weed through all the manipulation and all the, you know, all the different components that are applied onto us as people. And I don't know how to get through all of that and to the point where we can build community and and network and and get somewhere better at this it's like we don't want to ignore stuff you know like that's not the whole point of it is that we don't want to ignore things we want things to be better so we want to bring light to the things that are wrong well but it's we're, we're just constantly it's overwhelming by all of these things that are that are avoiding us like I said, keep an eye on the ball. We're constantly, if if you watch the news, you're going to be hit with six or seven items every day. Look, there's pointed caps on, on your pop bottles. It's going to kill you. Uh, we got to do something. We got to go out and have rallies for this. We got rallies for this, rallies for this. And they're all divisioning. They're throwing us off. A lot of times it's really bad information. That's why with, with James there was, or Monotalk was really getting with the water. So many times, everybody has been presented that mountain spring water is the cleanest thing you could ever accomplish, and it's dirty. <laughs> and the, the actual good water, the really cheap water in a store, the bottled water that's RO purified, that's the best. <laughs> they don't want people buying that. They want people buying the other water, the bad stuff they don't have to do anything to, for three times as much. And if you buy water bottled in Fiji, uh, you're paying for some ex or exorbitant price. I don't remember what you're paying for, but you know, it's just everything we do. We are so uh, conditioned by all of the marketing we've been get through the years of what is good. And we're being taught all the things that are really wrong. Uh, you know, for many, many years, we thought that butter was bad. Everything that we were uh, encountered was butter was bad. Margarine butter. was good, like ew. Good. And now, now I got like my doctor saying, you know, this was a few years back, no more margarine, never. You get some butter, <laughs> and I have to get uh, go to the nutritionist. You get some butter. Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, margarine is like plastic. plastic, like it's it's mm -hmm. it, it is a weird substance, and it was made originally i believe i might be wrong with this i'm sure that you know this uh that margarine was made for like chicken feed or like animal feed and they refused it so people they they were like oh yeah we'll we'll give it to people like <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm around most of the margarine and mayonnaise plants oh. so i don't remember the original cause it was started but it i mean a lot of iowa corn goes into margarine and mayonnaise um, and animal feed, of course. Less than a third of the grain that we grow in Iowa actually goes to humans. Wow. Um, so when they're always, always talking about the grains, they're really not talking about it for us. Yeah, very, very, very little bit. And then uh, uh, for many people say, you know, uh, we shouldn't be letting the cows eat the grain and then most of the time they're eating the stock they sell the humans the grain they sell the, the or give the other part to the to the cattle they say right. they're corn fed that's the marketing thing yeah. because it's really being fed the corn stock right and there are places well they will do some feeding or what's called finishing with the corn but most of the time they're eating 
other things than corn. And uh, <laughs> General Meow Meow says, fine, let the cows eat the people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, that, seriously? All right. We just I'm a fan of composting. Uh, fell down by a pig. Uh, pigs will kill you. That's right. They will, eat you. Uh, they will leave nothing. You guys remember? Uh, uh, oh, there's that serial killer up in Canada that did that. The pig uh -huh. farmer. I think he was uh, killing prostitutes and throwing their bodies into the pigs. It's a pig. That pen. was that was a scene in the uh, what was it Deadwood? Like that was that was like a that was a bit like you throw them in the pigs. You know what I mean? They just throw them in the hog. Anytime somebody got shot and they need to get rid of the body, they just fucking chuck them to the pigs. And well, mob did that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like, I, I so, mean, it, like it's, like a, it's a vehicle. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a movie, a plot vehicle. That's yeah, crazy. That's the, said their dad's cows always get kernel corn. Yeah, some will some will finish with corn. Some will do corn only, but majority of them up here, um, they'll try to save money by what they call silage. It's where they save the corn, let mm -hmm. it rot, ferment over the winter, and then feed it. Bales of it, like two thousand pound bales of it, just line line the farm. Wow. What? Oh my God. And it's just fermented. Are they are the animals getting drunk off of it too? Like <laughs> well, it's not moonshine yet. I mean Maybe. they could is there any ergot <laughs> poisoning in there? Maybe they're tripping on acid. I don't <laughs> know if they're suggesting ergotamine. Is that what yeah, a little, uh, little ergot? Yeah. <laughs> sure. So Shelly and I covered the CRISPR cows not long ago. And also uh, not psychedelic. Just Yo, but that. I was wondering about the like you know the effects of doing that, and what do you, do you know like anything about that? Like where, like how that could affect the rest of like the whole entire ecosystem? Like what they are doing to the cows? Like mostly, you, know, you think have to see how constrained the, the, the it is. So it, and again, this is up to the behavior of the person, not to the, the, how it's being used. So if a person is not being careful and they put just the gene that they want to change and not put in ways to handle the exceptions, it's, it, it might recognize other parts of the gene that seem similar and make that change. So if you have to constrain your, your gene change in a way that's going to identify one area and, and one area only, uh, I did one experiment with a, a very large toy company. And after we did the experiment for a new way to color their, their material, uh, they put that sample in with rats for 10 years to make sure it would cause no deviation to any rats before they would let one child play with it. Now, on the other hand, there can be other toy companies that say, hey, let's make the toys look better by putting lead or chromium in it, which was actually something that was done in the 60s and 70s. They wanted brighter colors and stuff like that. And, and uh, also um, window, window shades. They wanted window shades to be opaque, but they covered them, fill them up with black, black or lead to make them darker so they wouldn't let, let light through. So there are companies that don't think about anything other than what they want to get done. And they don't look at the exceptions of what can be handled downstream. The end result of what they... So that's why I'm saying it, it has to be done carefully. This is not something you do in three minutes. This is something you have to say, do I actually know all the repercussions? If you know all the repercussions and you've dealt with it and you've gone some testing to make sure it's going to work, then I would say I would not mind the CRISPR. In fact, if we have a major disease caused by... Um, fallout or some other type of chemical exposure that that actually changes a virus causes it we might have to use crispr to restore our uh, grain supplies our food supplies to what they were before the damage so right now we're only thinking of the crispr as making it bad we yeah, might well yeah because that's <laughs> worst case scenario is always you know i mean that's always on my mind especially when it comes to science and like you can't just like always reverse it. It's not like, you know, it, it's not the same thing, especially when you're talking about changing the DNA of something. You okay, know? so like, I, can un I can understand using CRISPR to uh, like try to reverse genetic damage, like with certain breast cancer genes and trying to reverse that with CRISPR. 
I can understand that, you know, that's life and death too. Uh, but like, you know, it's engineer, like engineer, engineering <laughs> animals to be more adjustable to the climate and you know from the big it was like what 2017 when the first calf was born or something like that and now the fda is, is so quick it like i don't think they know everything that is to need to be known about this i i get very worried when it's done quickly yeah it's yeah. The, like it's the quickness that makes me pause the most i think like if this was like 30 this specific thing was like 30 years in the making and they did like rigorous experimentation and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I just like, don't like the idea of it to begin with, but I'd be a little bit more comfortable with it. But yeah. also, the reason it's so difficult, to work, there are so many tiny, minute things that can happen with chemicals in the body. There are 200,000 chemicals that we have to control in the body. 200,000 chemicals we have to control in the body. So, Let's look at some of them have different effects at different times. Let's take oxytocin. So oxytocin has several different applications in the body, depending on what the system is going on. So it, in, 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 it can go from anything from arousal to how people uh, uh, view other things to how you're concentrating. And depending on what your system status is, you need to test the safety and what effects of, of that. But not only that, if you do put something like CRISPR in there, you also have to go to all of the other chemicals you know and say, does this make a difference? Is it is it seen? And that is not a, a one year, two year. I, I really only had just a couple of things that we did with CRISPR. And we were looking at a 10 year trial just to get it set up, just to get the permission to go 10 years of whatever. We did the initial research and then you had to carefully go by it. And this was for a blade of grass. Yeah. And a blade of grass is not as complex as a human. Well, most humans. Well, uh, I, <laughs> you might actually remember this, Snark, but do you remember in the beginning of the COVID hysteria, uh, they released a study saying that they found uh, that CRISPR can cause cancer under the radar, radar, and they had only just discovered it somewhat recently. It, it could because there are all of these things that you have to know what their effect is. CRISPR itself wouldn't cause the cancer, but it would induce the part that that, it, that it, it, put it in it. So it can, by wherever it switches, where, wherever that makes the cut, it makes a new new item. But so, you're the saying CRISPR itself doesn't cause the cancer. It made it possible. Something you're saying, that well, have done there before made that go into a state where it was possible to get the cancer. Yeah, it like greatly increased the uh, risk of cancer, and because it was so under the radar, they they didn't detect it for a while. And I I think I mean I mean God, there's been so much that's happened over the past three years, but I think they said, um, you know, there's the possibility of a great increase of other uh, other types of diseases arising from CRISPR that won't be caught on to for like years or decades. Again, it's not the CRISPR. What the problem is, is it's making a change without proper controls. So if, if you really need, if you're going to make a change to a human body, you need a lot of people making a lot of expert decisions and a lot of, I'm, I'm not really an expert in that area myself, you need a lot of people with expertise on it making decisions. You don't need one person that has a patent that he can sell for a billion dollars every time uh, the entire country or entire world gets a shot. Yeah. I mean, the, cancer used to be so rare, too. It used to be like, you know, this really rare thing that, that people get. And, and now I think that I don't, I'm not you know don't quote me on it but i believe it was like one in two people are is going to have cancer in their lifetime and it's like the influx of it and and the alarming rate of that along with everything else like we know that uh 
like lunch meats cause carcinogens. Those, you know, it's carcinogenic and all these, you know, these different things and the foods that we eat and, and all of this stuff causes cancers. But yet we still continue to let corporations decide what they're going to make. And then we, we select what we're going to, you know, the lesser of whatever evil or whatever our priority is that we pick, you know, from the, from those things. And it's like, I, I don't know. I don't know. At this point, it's like, I, I feel like, is there even a way for us to, to break this cycle? Break the cycle. And, and really, and really try to pull it back and, and, and like wake people up. It, it feels like there's so many people that are in, like, they're just, they're, I say we're in a zombie apocalypse because it's like people are just going through the motions of life, going through things and they, you know, they get the information. It's like, yeah, that causes cancer. Yep. I know. And then I'm going to consume yeah, it. The, the actual you numbers know? right now are that you'll have a, uh, one out of three people by the time they're 30 in the United States will have some sort of cancer. They estimate in the next five years, that's, that'll be like the common number. And we're doing this and we know that it's happening, but there's not enough, like there's so much of this distraction and you know, the propaganda is so heavy and it's like, I don't know how we break the cycle well, let let you let me tell you something I've noticed is uh, I graduated in high school in 1998, and like the few classes before me and the few classes after me, like that time frame, it's about six years. I noticed um, a lot of classmates or schoolmates were getting weird diseases that are rare, uh, getting. Uh, types of cancers like at 20 that people don't get until like 50, 60 years old, like rectal cancer at like 23, like, yeah. like, and a weird, weirdly high amount of them. And I noticed that maybe like a few years older than me and younger. Jesus. And it's, it seems like now everybody had, and now all the kids have something going on for them. You know, it yeah. just seems uh, like that. Uh, yeah. Real high, real high incidence of uh, uh, intestinal cancers, especially uh, things like, uh, oh, I can't think of the name of the disease anymore. <laughs> but but anyway, um, so real high. And mm -hmm. in, in put, instead of thinking of it as um, one thing of cancer or whatever, most likely what was causing it was would not be talked about at all on a major news service. So uh, let's let's take for instance uh, um, the uh, problems with uh, autism. You'd say stuff like once a rumor started going around that it was coming from the shots. Mm -hmm. um, you never heard anything about uh, the fluorescent light bulbs. Which has oh. a, you know, been the 15 million times chance of giving causing the problem. Sure. So oh, I mean, okay, yeah. I, I didn't even think about it. But you uh, for getting a shot, it was so much in the person's head that hey, at this time I gave this child a shot. Six months later, I had this. You don't think of when the light bulbs broke. Right. And in the United States, we have all kinds of drills for things that can go wrong. In Germany, they actually have drills in case a light bulb gets broken in the school how to safely get out of the school yeah that's how well, think, think, think about how many pre-k's and stuff have uh fluorescent lighting right but think think again now how many people and what and and actually one of the major networks from back in the 60s 70s 80s 90s was owned by a company who their major product was was the light bulb yeah man g West so you don't see you you are constantly in the news being pushed toward other things other than their clients they're they're, they're are going for and i'm not saying that it caused caused it but i'm saying hey if i got one that's much higher than the other that doesn't make the news 
But if I've got somebody that's putting an ad on there, I know that there's never going to be any, any, uh, uh, at, or any type of question at all that, and I'm not saying I know it's the cause, but I'm saying I, I objected to the fact that there was no question. It could right. be a factor though. Could yeah, they can both, the thing be, a, is just they can both to, be a factor. To be yeah, a factor with like awesome. maybe yeah. environmental yeah. chemicals problem, and stuff. We usually look at seven factors for something to happen. Uh, okay. Hand, machine, material, uh, method, uh, the environment, all the things that can go wrong usually have multiple instances that happen at the same time. When we go into a factory and say, like, I'd go into factories that were had some major problems, and we'd try to clean them up, get them straightened out, and get going again. So major, a lot of times we go in and we look at, okay, not only did, hey, we found this broken bulb at this place. So why was the bulb broken? Was the person trained to use it? What was happening when the bulb got there? How did it get through? And we have to no longer think about the bulbs broken, and we have to think about the chain of events that happened before and right. the chains of events that could happen later for it. And we don't do that anymore. We, we don't do that much. I, in fact, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I was at 10 different places that got shut down and moved offshore. And one of the things that uh, I did pick up uh, was uh, uh, right before my wife got cancer, I was actually working, uh, going to factories with cars. And I would, I would look down what happened with the cars. And many of the car industries decided to no longer have engineers looking at why it happened, that it was cheaper just to pay for the fines. Right. That's so fucking crazy. How, how uh, disposable is everything on every level in our culture? It's just, it's insane. Well, to a corporation, you are just a, a, a number. Yeah. I mean, what no, that? definitely. I understand. It's just, it really, it all, everything is done with that. Uh, if we do this, we get these immediate profits across the spreadsheet. Like, like the whole thing is just plotted out like a, you know what I mean? Everybody's you, move is completely meticulous. You know that. what that reminds me of is uh fight club. Yeah. And that was what? 99. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's just gotten worse. It's gotten way worse. Yeah, it just keeps getting. Like I said, since I've been 19 years old and really realized, hey, everything's really getting fucked up. <laughs> it's going worse and faster and worse and more faster and more worse. Yeah, hate to sound like an old cynical bastard, but you know, well, I'm not able to keep up. You, you, you know. If you're on a skateboard and it's going down the hill, you can perceive that you're traveling a little bit faster every few seconds, right? I mean, it's like that's what's fucking happened since I was 19. I was on the yeah. crest of the hill of my youth, you know, and just going down the other side. You're like, oh, shit. It's the Very whole fast. boiling frog thing, though, you know? Yeah. It's just slow enough for you just to barely notice. Uh -huh. For the ones that can the notice. Boiling. Yeah, the boiling frog thing. But that's what yeah. I mean. It's like a combination of that. No matter how much you become aware of of all of these factors, there is just a, an infinite number of things that you don't fucking know influencing all the things that you do know. So it's like you're just playing this constant game of, of trying to play pickup sticks, but you have no time in between because all the sticks are falling all the time. You know what I mean? You can't. You can't scoop up enough jacks or whatever, or whatever the thing, whatever the metaphor I'm trying to fucking say. <laughs> Sorry, I can't keep up with the chat. I, uh, <laughs> I'm i low in here because my chair is all the way down. I'm, my, my foot is almost completely unusable right now. I'm trying to get it to heel, and I have to keep it elevated. So my chair is all the way down, and I've got my foot sticking up on, on something. So I'm basically back about 50 degrees. <laughs> He, he, he's coming at it he from a different angle he people just, okay just give him he some really slack. is drowning that's it that's just it. <laughs> yeah, he's drowning in the green screen <laughs> so, um yeah i'm, I'm going to be moving to a different location here pretty quick uh and uh i'll have to get get everything set up upstairs but i'm i'm in no shape to even hardly even get up there so uh, we we appreciate you hanging out uh, with us anyway, Snork. No matter what angle you're uh, you're coming at. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if if, if, uh, if uh, spears from spears from uh, or, um, tungsten 
Yeah. Uh, messengers of God may not have been uh, tungsten. Uh, so, not have been. Then, uh, what else could they have been? Uh, they might have been a different material. It doesn't matter what material. Yeah, it does. <laughs> huh. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, so uh, the. Uh, uh, sorry, I forgot the other one that was in there. Jesus, my God. Uh, <laughs> I said, I, I can't even take a leave right now. Uh, so. Well, hell. Yeah, that really sucks. Yeah, that's... No, no, no. So, wait, you say you can't take a leave from work? Uh, no, I can't take a, the medicine to leave. <laughs> Oh, I'll leave. <laughs> That's Tylenol is just kind of like, uh-huh. yeah, I can't That's take any. Like. That's about it. I can't take any NSAIDs, so that's fun. <laughs> I couldn't for a really long time, um, but I was able. I'm able to tolerate them now, but for a long time I couldn't. I used to be fine with them, and then. It just went downhill. They kept up prescribing me like the super potent ones with really bad side effects. And it just got to the point where my body couldn't handle the incense anymore. Mm. Yeah, I took like the last time I took took one, it was an Advil and I had like this like pain in my lungs. Like I couldn't breathe or hurt to breathe for like three days. And one nurse told me it was something similar to it, like anaphylactic shock, but like in the lungs or something. Whoa. Something bronchial, maybe. I don't right. know. That sounds fucked up to have a, like anaphylactic shock in your lung tissue. Like having all that stuff swell up like rapidly would be like, what the fuck? You'd be drowning. Yeah, she's like, if you, well, I, I had some doctors before that tell me that if I continue taking it um i'm a high risk for intestinal rupture and bleed <laughs> mm. and like as soon as like once you notice you're pretty much dead right like you you don't really feel it until you're like close to death so yeah but then i had that long you know reaction and uh-huh. doctors were like yeah don't even take one it'll kill you <laughs> But this is like after years of t- being on, on the really heavy duty ones. Wow. Yeah, and I think I told you about the the Celebrex and Biox. What it did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they put me on Mobic. Oh God, some other ones I can't remember off the top of my head. But yeah. <laughs> oh. Yay. God. Yay, Western medicine. Ah, <sighs> it sucks. That's just crazy. But that's just like that's a short tail for somebody like that has to deal with the things that you're dealing with. And I, you know, I've known other people too that just like just rattle off these medicines, just like pages of stuff. And I'm like, what are you saying to me? You know what I mean? You just told me like 17 different compounds, and you have to take these this many times a day. And oh my goodness, man, having you know having cancer or something that's that's eating you up and you have to keep supplementing and doing all these different things to try to fight it is just like that's got to be the worst fucking thing you know what i mean like well i i, mean, I, I i've actually you... i at one point i think i was on like 11 medications i'm down to like maybe five six but some of them are like allergy medication you know uh-huh. um but i I'd, I'd like to get to the point where i could just like like get down to like even just one or two. Oh my god. That that'd be nice. <laughs> right. Uh you know, something for the nerve misfirings and probably that's just gonna be it. Um See, that's that's but like, I, that... I can't afford the supplements that I would need for that. And right. it would be expensive. So I mean like trying to keep up with that and you know what I mean? And and you know, fucking just just knowing so many different people that are on just this laundry list of medicines and things and like god damn man 
How does your body well, supposed to? Boswellia was better than any prescription NSAID I had ever ever taken. But I was taking like twice the recommended dose. Mm -hmm. But for my body, I need that. But at that dose, it worked way better than any pharmaceutical NSAID. Wow. But it takes a little, it takes like a couple of weeks for it to fully know what's going on. That's crazy. Before you really notice anything huge. Right. Yeah. That's why. But like I can't I can't afford this stuff. It sucks. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Baba Yaga said in the chat, I want people to be a awake and aware aware and awake we need each other but i'm sorry not only are the ruling class my enemy but grown adults who don't try to get out the, of their colonialized mind is my enemy too yeah it's going to take a long time to get get away from our, our our system of how we're developed we are developed to serve the wealthy uh -huh. uh, that's pretty much the only way it's been we've been done like that for many many hundreds of years and uh the, this the monarchy system alone was uh the, the people farthest from the monarchy tended to die the most so uh every type of system we have how we do things we need to be carefully thinking about how we treat other people for instance only back as far as 1960 uh, women were basically just slaves. I, I don't mean to have that be an insult. No, it's but true. I can think it's of true. how my mother was treated. Uh, mm -hmm. That uh, she was actually, I mean, if she wanted to do something like get a credit card, she had to have my my father with her to sign for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, buying different things, being able to get different jobs, not uh, available. And we're still. We're still reeling with the transition. I've mm -hmm. seen many, many very intelligent women not have the backing they need to get through school properly. And we have a we have this attitude right now that we do not need scientists and stuff. Scientists is blowing us wrong. Because look who is ruling the scientists and whatever. We need mm -hmm. people back to having real science, not science to sell things that politicians are going to sell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's the without, money. It's the money. Yeah, without <laughs> money. We actually used to have people that would go in and do research. They would say, okay, how much of this chemical can I have? That's all they would do. They wouldn't be doing that to make, make a profit. They just want to know, hey, what, what can we do to help with the human body? We right. need that again. Uh, but we, we need a hundred-year structure on how we are going to get over what it was like for women in the 60s. Because really how I see it, I'm seeing it as getting worse and worse for women because a lot of the protections that they had were taken away without, you know, without having the ability to immediately jump into the new jobs. We're like, okay, a woman can be vice president. While they put any woman as vice president, we got Kamala Harris. Yeesh. No, we, we need women that are competent to be. And that yeah. means yeah. we need, we need qualified women. 35 years of everything they need to be a president. We don't need somebody who had really good knee pads and got into the right positions in politics. And yep. I'm sorry if that sounds like an insult, but I believe the person deserves it. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, when I see, I see students coming in, uh, women coming in, very, very intelligent, have difficulties. And there'll be like one woman out of 19, two women out of 19. Uh, and it's, we need to have them and when they come in, they tend to not have had the experiences that men have had from all their lifetime building things because they weren't given things that that, that gave them an advantage when they got to the school. Mm -hmm. So the other students, maybe 50 or 60 percent of them, have already done the items that I'm going to talk them in their introduction to, to materials. Whereas for many of the women's, it's going to be the first time they've seen it, second year maybe they've seen it. And um, when they have seen it, They've probably seen it from somebody that didn't really understand what was going on, so they don't really get a good chance to get it. And it's really tough to become a teacher. <laughs> I'm, I wish I was a better yeah. teacher myself, but uh, I mean, look at, and then look at the female teachers, like how how you know how flooded 
it is to be, you know, a younger teacher. And then now our culture of violence, you know, because the great example that, that our government and NATO and, and just, you know, like the history and everything that's perpetuated and put on to us, teachers now have to be aware of so much more. Like as if they didn't have enough to try to like, you know, take a broken system and try to help students, you know, who, who are being inundated with everything from every direction. Like it's gotta be so overwhelming to be in that kind of like social construct now, right? Like to be a teacher, to be anywhere where everybody is griping at you all the time from every angle where you're, so focused on like what you're saying and what you're doing, but not really like the teaching and actually like doing what you, what you, you know, set out as your career to do to help, you know, a hot, whatever, you know, to actually yeah. teach, you know, like, <laughs> like, you know, being so politically correct and, and worried about this and then that. And then like, you know, like just the amount of pressure that's already put on kids and then like the kids are eating all this toxic food and then, you know, they have ADHD and then they have this and, the, and you know what I mean? It's like, it's like so much distraction is piled on top of people. It's like, no wonder we're breaking like yeah. mentally everywhere. Like just, you know what I mean? Like we're just having mental breaks everywhere on top of the pressure of the psyops and the, pre you know what I mean? Like all the manipulation that's happening on top of it forcefully. You know what I think is cool is how, uh, you know, you're pointing out all these horribly terrible fucking, you know, situations that are very difficult to deal with. And peace is just giggling. Intermittently. <laughs> <laughs> Every other sentence that you say, you just say, now, <laughs> if you wouldn't mind, I'll show a picture from 70 yeah. years ago, what the level of technology was. And we still teach the same amount of time. So I'm going to hit hit the share. Let's okay. see if this pops up. Share screen. Uh, share screen. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a little slow. Do you see a picture? Yep, there it is. Oh, this is a picture of Stockholm, Sweden in 1953. Wow. Do you know what, what those wires are? Electricity? Telegraph? Telephone. Telephone. Yikes. Wow. All the telephone wires going across there. I'm going to stop the share, but that's that's the level of technology we were only 70 years ago. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Okay. What would we need today to do that level? Uh, a cell phone. Not a router. Even. That little thing that you're you holding. Know. Yeah, basically a cell phone. Yeah, and it's got these on here, so I get wires on there easier. Right, just like a a, a simple chipset could handle all and that. So we have to get that much information, that difference into the students right away. Uh, how to get them under understand what's going on, and yeah. in the last ten years, thirty percent of it was done. I mean, just the last ten years, thirty percent difference. Wow. That's the fucking amazing, that most dude. Public schools have the instructors were not using before they started teaching, Man. and the things are changing so fast that um, uh, the, uh, my other, the other instructor, my, myself, decided to use this one because we wanted to come ten years forward in, in what we were teaching uh, and have them be able to to uh, get things across, and. Um, a majority of the students, the teachers, that they're not bad teachers. They're better teachers than I am. They don't have access to the information yet. The right. school aren't given the money to bring them up. You know, if you go out and buy buy a bunch of things, it just to get just to get those for twenty students is going to be a couple hundred bucks. Sure. And um, it is a lot of money, a lot of training. Got to have expertise in it, and you got to have practice. And um, there is just so much we have to go through. Now, take that back. A lot of children do not have access to these things to use them. And uh, really, realistically, just like we're teaching 
math at fifth grade. Yeah. And we not we need to not be teaching this in college. We need to be teaching how to use these things in fifth grade. Yeah. They should already be building those same things that your students are building, like that kind of situation. That's wild though. Like to think it's it's progressed so quickly from when I was a a, a kid in school and seeing my first, you know, Texas instruments or fucking, you know what I mean? Like the first computers and stuff that we saw apples and so are they doing Amazing that it's progressed this quickly? How are they doing it in other countries compared to us? Like, are um, we like severely behind the world in, in it also? You know what I mean? Like besides what we should have like adapted and, and kept up with. How China far behind actually, are we? It has amazed me for quite a while. Um, the Chinese people wanted to make sure that they weren't being left behind. And I don't remember if it was 15 years ago, 20 years ago, they started making them solder up their own radios, like transistor radios in class. And now they, they actually make very complicated things. There are places in China where you can go and just say, I want this. And within a few days, you will have what you're asking for. And uh, we are tremendously getting left behind the Chinese people. Uh, and at this point, we're buying some stuff to them. We need to start making some stuff here and uh, being able to develop, or we are going to be uh, a non-functioning country. Uh, we oh, need yeah. To I think we're, I, yeah, we're I already, like, agree. Well, I think we're there. Like, it's like, it's like either, you know, we're at a breaking point. It's like either we're going to, we're going to catch up or at least go in that direction to be relevant or we're, we're going to end up, you know, like who knows, who knows? Like, and I'm like, you know, <laughs> Steve thinks that we're just going to be ir irrelevant. Like we, you know, we have this whole ideology about like what these other countries are and what they have and you know, how bad they have it. But and we're comparing it to the things that we have that are different in ours, but we're not comparing the whole entire picture. We're like, oh, well, they don't have these rights, and they don't, you know what I mean? Like it's like we're we're nitpicking, you know, what what matters, and we're not focused on the, uh, once again, we're not focused on the right things that that really could make a huge difference. We can have all of it. We can have it all. We can have. Well, Look at what's most important in our country, which is like money, pop culture stuff. America um, means for like for the love of money. Like that's that's what w our country is. Like named. you know all this, all this stuff, and then you look at. I mean, I'm not saying it's not like that in other countries, but definitely not to the degree that it is in the U.S. And um, intelligence is still something to be looked down on in in this country like going to college going to university for science yeah like being book smart is looked down on yeah too now, cool for school and like you know like oh it's not good to be the nerd and i'm yeah. like why is that as backwards thinking it's the bullies trying to tell you no you're not good enough you're not this you're not that because it's really their own inadequacies like but it's then, not about you it's about trying to make they want it they want to, you to dumb yourself down so that they don't feel so stupid that they don't feel like they're the ones that is that, you know what i mean and it's like no, we we need to re you know it's you're fucking good at school. That's awesome. That's awesome. That is something to excel at, like to be book smart, to be you know what I mean. Like th that's the goal. But you so, know, there's also the problem where there's a lot of people who are book smart that have absolutely no no common sense when it comes to other parts of their lives. They're severely lacking. So there's it, a lack it, of balance. There's a lack yeah. of balance in so, every aspect. So there needs to be a balance in there somewhere, but to say it's just uh it usually comes down to money though. Yeah, yeah. Most of the students That's I have, true. That's true. My students that I have most of my students get paid by the state of Iowa. 
further tuition and their books. But living cost is expensive. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they have to take a job. And it's it's almost like the jobs in our area just brutalize the students. So they have to go work at a restaurant or uh, different uh, stuff around. They don't get paid well. They're tired. It's tough to go to school tough to go to school uh, and uh, if they go on to uh, another another school after this they got to pay pay their way and realistically if if this was uh, any of the uh, European uh, like the northern European countries like Germany or um, or um, the Scandinavian countries they pay the students to go they keep their grades up they get paid so they don't have to take jobs and I really see that as necessary. Um, I do too. So we go to school a lot less than anybody else. So we're off for three months in the summer. Basically, we were off in the summer so that students could be out helping farming. So they'd be farmhands. Uh, and the main goal was to create the farmhands to get through to be a soldier and go off and kill somebody. But now we need to be starting to think about um, we need to evolve. <laughs> many, many other countries. Let, let's look at Europe. Is it mostly ten months? Uh, they, they have school for ten months, but they have a little bit shorter. At at the age uh, that we go into tenth grade here in the United States, they go or eleventh grade. Yeah, eleventh grade. They go into specialized. They're either going to go on to be ready for college or go on to be ready for a field. So like plumbing, whatever. They'll, they'll actually have really good training in, in those senses and they will be paid for it. They're um, set up for success. They are set up for success. Um, like it's really, it, it comes down to, it's very basic when you come down to it. It's like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But like we have that. a lot of, we have a lot of social things that we do that they don't do, or they do that we don't do. <laughs> for one thing, many of, many of the Scandinavian countries, they try to all dress similarly, not alike, similarly. So yeah. it's it really viewed as being uh, bad if you dress up and uh, unappropriately. Um, yeah. On the other side, he, people tend to wear dress shoes all the time when they go out in public. Hmm. But they have the support system that some of the students aren't felt like they're nobodies. And in, in the United States, many students right from the start are told that they're nobodies, they're going nowhere. Uh, why are you here breathing our air? And uh, we don't have also, oh, this may have some about Swedish. Yeah, Swedish schools are awesome. Uh, Finnish are still the best. Let me yeah. tell you, I lucked out getting, getting the anthropology professors and the fine arts professors that I had because they, they all, they all, well, not all of them. I some of them I definitely did not get along with, but the majority of them, like I had almost a personal relationship with them because they saw something in me. Like I, I don't want to like sound full of myself, but I did have connections with a lot of my professors. Well, if they're, you know, I'm like I said, I'm not the best professor, but uh, if if you have an interesting topic. And people are agreed with it they will come up and start asking you questions and uh i was we we're really surprised i actually had one student come back with his fiance to introduce her to me nice <laughs> oh thought, that's awesome i that's was sweet. successful with one student <laughs> hell yeah dude oh my gosh i You're always think it. about that in that time you told me about how there was a, a student that that called what they called a pencil what a, a boomer thing or something boomer like boomer a boomer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like that. And he had and Stuart tells me the story about how they had to like can... go and find a pencil sharpener to show them. <laughs> oh my god. And I was like, why did they call it a boomer thing? They don't I'm like, I have a million pencils. Like my daughter, you know, she grew up with she's we still have pencils. We still have, you know what I mean? We still have like yeah. There's a Most lot of people of my who, students, who don't No pencils because they're given pencils that are click, you know, the yeah the, the mechanical. Best. So most of my students think of those as the type of pencil that you would get in their grandfather's drawer. So they call them boomer sticks. 
So <laughs> um, I told our administrative assistant this. I said, I have to buy a pencil sharpener and I got to put it in the room. I just have to. And uh, so they're looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm stupid. And I go, I, I, I just as an extra credit question, I asked my students what, what it was. And I got back the answer, boomer sticks. And <laughs> when I told her that, she goes, you're getting your pencil sharpener. <laughs> <laughs> That's I mean, the kind of higher learning many, you want. You know, you got you yeah. to keep these kids on track. How many times like, do you remember like being in school and, you know, like having to go up there and, and sharpen the pencil, like in the middle of class, of course, and it was super loud. Or like if you had to erase, the, if you had to um, to empty out the pencil sharpener, oh my gosh. And the shavings would go everywhere. And like it was a big <laughs> thing and it had a certain smell. Okay, bird. I, I love found that. that we had pencil sharpeners, but they're all automatic pencil sharpers you stick them in it just doesn't give the thing i wanted the crank <laughs> yeah need the old it's school it's so one. satisfying and i i personally don't use tell i i hardly even ever write anything so i don't use pencils of they're working and i'm constantly if i got to sign something i'm looking around for where i can grab a pen uh and i just so almost forgot how to write <laughs> Wow. I still write notes like all the time. Like uh, and then, in engineering school, we were taught not to actually write. We were taught to block it all out. So my kids will look at my writing and say, say that I'm, I write uh, different. They, my, they, taught, they were taught not how to write differently than I was. Weird hieroglyphic. My uh, Caribbean studies professor, I, I used to journal all the time. And he, he'd see me doing it. He, he'd tell me not to stop doing it, especially in cursive, because they're great historical documents. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he was really sad to see everything go digital. Yeah. But because, like, written work can last for centuries to millennia. Sure. Uh, depending on what kind of materials you use. But... Um, yeah, he was the he was the professor that had a photo of me showing off one of my tattoos in his uh, Caribbean folklore textbook. Nice. And he and he had uh, one of my voodoo doll paintings in his office. We did a little exchange for that. And uh, yeah, he was a cool teacher. That's dope. Oh. I mean, Skyland knows how to write in cursive, and it wasn't like taught to her. Like, okay, stop. They like stop. They stop teaching that. Like, but like she knows how to do it. But okay, stop. <laughs> Skyland, can you go get him? <laughs> what are you doing, Pete? He's asking. What are you? He's saying, baby. What are you doing? <laughs> Why are you so loud? No, no, no. <laughs> Peaches, oh look out. There's a marmot behind you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah a marmot. Oh. So cute. <laughs> yeah, it's cute. Except for it's like right in my ear. Yeah, you, you. He's like, yeah. Yeah, everybody luckily talking. I could turn the volume down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody wearing the earbuds, we're sorry. Yeah, I know. I apologize. <laughs> My ears hurt too. I don't know you. what to do with him. <laughs> right? Yeah, you're. LA you're... comedians like listen to that nuance. What a, what a beautifully nuanced. What a sing-songy squawk that is. <laughs> He's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Are you on? Are, are you on TV? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> little ham. He's not the best speaker, but um, he he really is a cute one. Yeah, <laughs> he, he tries. He's confidently wrong often, but you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are you wrong? He's very much like yeah, mm. like myself. That's good. Oh my gosh! It's just Kim Swarry Kate. <laughs> I want to shout out all these people. Like, uh, hey. General Meow Meow and Aggravated Progressive and, and SFT and yeah. uh, LA Comedians and uh, uh, Aggravated. 
Uh, Angela Sangster. Julie Love is in there. Julie Love. Gray Walker joins third party. SFT. There are a whole bunch of folks. The Popeye. The L. Ghost Arts. L. Latham, who's Gamer. probably gone to lay down by now because she said she had a screamer headache. Jim Young is in here. Jim Young. I love that guy. Ghost Arts. He says things that, that make my brain go ding. Oh. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, that's. Really okay. Factual? No, no. We're that done, checks then. out. Are we done? Are we done? You I like stop. listening to uh, to people who do that. That was way too loud. Oh, there's people up on the hill setting off fireworks. Oh, sure oh, of is. course there is. Oh, we lost. They live out in the country. <laughs> of course there is. <laughs> Yes, Drew's thank you. Oh my gosh, we're gonna be putting up the. Um, oh, I hope Snork is okay. I hope that his power didn't just go out. Oh, They're, yeah, because he's was, having some storms in, it, in his area. Those crazy weathers. Oh tornado, yeah, he did mention that, didn't he? Tornado warnings mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. Oh, there he comes. Nice. Oh. Sorry about that. <laughs> I was like, I hope it wasn't the storms that knocked him out. <laughs> yeah, just a little link, that's all. <laughs> it's usually myself that does it. Like, oh, don't click that X, dumbass. <laughs> I do that I, too. <laughs> I think that might have been what happened. I, was <laughs> I do that all the time. I'm like, oh, shit, that's, that's on that side. Oh, that means that one. Okay, damn. I thought I was <laughs> clicking in a completely different area. Yep. What the hell? Huh? What just happened? I don't know. Did that was weird. Happened? What happened? Uh, yeah, like everybody started buffering for like a split second. Whoa. That's probably me re-entering. Could be, yeah. Uh, shook up the uh, <sighs> the matrix there for a second. You broke Mar the stream. Mar Mar Marmots <laughs> were scrambling. Sent the marmots scrambling. <laughs> Well, it's not like I have the best internet either. Right. I have Spectrum. Yeah, we, in, we don't have in fast a, internet in a either. small in a in a small uh, country town. So. But furring. So does anybody have? Okay, no, not you, not you. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, does anybody have questions for uh, Snork about any of this stuff? That we're talking about or Shelly. science, well, yeah. Or, 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 or Shelly, <laughs> I feel like I know nothing when Snork talks. <laughs> I know. I know I like to listen. Okay, no, that's not. No. I don't like that. No, come on. Come on. Here, I gave you a banana. <laughs> Angel is like, did you guys cross the streams? You're not supposed to cross the streams. <laughs> we learned that. Did we learn nothing in Ghostbusters? Come on, people. Uh, Let's see if there's anything. Uh, Zinekis taught us. Hello. Pizzas, are you well, I, I think on Friday, was it Friday that storm came? I think what happened was a trip. Uh, a transformer was hit by lightning. Uh -huh. So there there might be some issues with the with the internet. It might be spotty. So hmm. I don't know. I was gone for a day. <laughs> we just had our, our our major location where all the wires come together, transformers and then go back out to the other parts of the states. Just got hit by three tornadoes. Holy oh, shit. shit. Jesus. Oh. I, I was wondering if is I our infrastructure yeah. like can we handle this kind of stuff? Like, can we handle like are they doing anything to protect against like we the are not having the weather? conversations we should be having? If you don't mind if I get into that, um, go for uh, it. Yeah, yeah, please, please do. <laughs> so let, let's go with permaculture. I would be a fan of permaculture if we were living in the time before us, but the temperatures are changing so quickly. I don't see permaculture as being viable for five more years. I mean, after that, um, we need to start being ready to alter how we're growing things. And I don't mean mm -hmm. by doing CRISPR. 
I mean, the rethinking <laughs> what we're doing, how we're doing, how we're eating, how, how we're getting through is that. Okay. Um, so we're getting hit by a derecho today. We're not going to know until tomorrow when the lights come on how much of a crop we're going to have left because the main the main areas of Iowa that grow the most food for for the United for the world just got wiped out again. I don't know how bad it was. I mean, it could be no damage at all. It could be really bad. But mm. we had a derecho in December. We've had two in one year now. We've had three in the last four or yeah, three years. Um, these are something that in my lifetime, you know, until the nineties, I was only in one. Uh, and these used to be like a once every, uh, once every cent, a uh, hundred years thing. Yeah. And now it's, it's com common. Our corn gets laid flat. It becomes mostly useless. Some of it will pop back up, but most of wow. it become useless. And, uh, so it is, it is pretty bad areas. Uh, so this one started in South Dakota. I know Sioux Falls got hit really bad. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it made it all the way to um, that's like a, about Dubuque. And then there was another part of it that was stretching off all the way off to Chicago that was already having tornadoes. And it's probably going to end up somewhere near um, the final bit will probably be near Milwaukee. So we don't know, and it's not just our areas, the areas going across uh, Wisconsin and Illinois are also high food areas. And Man. we are not ready for how we're growing food uh, using methods that we used even 15 years ago might not be viable. And we're having conversations about, should we be, should we be uh, growing, um, you know, or, doing things with our food and we're not talking about how we're going to grow food if the temperature rises another degree because every time it rises a degree these storms are going to get worse and worse and worse and this is how yep. much worse it's gotten in just a few years and uh so our building codes um you know the purpose of a trailer was basically so that they could call it a trailer they put wheels on it and it goes by a different set of standards than a normal house normal house has to have a certain amount of uh oomph and be able to withstand something sure uh, a trailer house uh, doesn't have to meet those standards so that is a way to provide more housing to people without having to meet the standards puts them in all kinds of risk when a derecho comes through um think of a derecho as a tornado that is 100 miles wide right. and uh you know, even the areas like that on steroids, it's like that's just yeah, ridiculous. You're hitting 80 mile, miles, 80 mile an hour winds for, for 50 to 100 miles, and that will be 600 miles wide. Uh, yeah, and then and then they travel 600 miles. Like that's fucking that's that's insane. That's what happened in in uh, in January, well, the fucking night we were talking to fucking Yona, and it, and there's yeah. there's they're just went across fucking Kentucky, and you know, and I think they hit Iowa that night as well. Yeah, well, that we was... had we had a derecho in December. Yeah, which we didn't even think derechos were possible in December. Right, that we, was that's what it was. Yeah, this is the yeah. condition right now. This extreme humidity and change that it would be possible. We had a derecho in September or no, December, and it was just like what? Jesus <laughs> Christ! And it's like all those things that you needed before, like you know cold air or or humidity or whatever you know all of those things are covered now so it'll just happen randomly all the time forever so large Lovely. sections of our housing system how it's set up are not going to be feasible no. we, we almost lost a town called cedar rapids i mean it was yeah. a big town in iowa does most all, all of our avionics a lot of it the best avionics for everything comes from cedar rapids yeah that's and a, we that's almost a huge lost term. cedar rapids three years ago Two years ago in a derecho uh i mean it used to be a wonderful city all kinds of trees it basically lost every tree in the derecho wow uh i mean people were like you know hey we're used to tornadoes so like i had a tornado hit two two houses down last year and it pulled up my my i had some bushes in the back pulled those up and it pulled up the telephone pole just took it out of the area and then Man. across the street down the way it, it hit a house and 
uh, did a lot more damage. But they looked looked at the damage down there, started fixing it, and they didn't realize that the telephone pole just oops and went away. Just gone. <laughs> so I had to when they emailed me that my tele <laughs> my power was back on, I had to email them back and say, No, it isn't. <laughs> and they, they came out the whole day <laughs> because they had left the area thinking that everything was done. They didn't even see where the telephone pole went. And uh, I've got pictures of all kinds of things in this area where uh, we haven't fixed the damage from two years ago when the derecho hit. And so, uh, do you do you do you think that the the what the the cause of this issue? You know, because we're always talking about the effect of what happened. Do you think that the cause of the issue is? the things that we're we're talking about with climate change or do you think that i mean because um there's a lot of there's a lot of comparison of you know whether the climate change you know like obviously the climate is changing uh, i think i think everybody can you know step outside and, and realize that especially when in the middle of december i can go outside and i can be in a t-shirt that's not normal. We used to get a lot of snow in Connecticut. We don't get the snow anymore. You know, like, is it, is it like something that is progressing naturally and not we're natural. accelerating it or, what, or, what or is there? it human accelerated? You know what I mean? Like what is the main root cause of it? If, if you went to what, what is going on, the, the, the extreme energy put out by any storm system is related to the temperature, humidity, and pressure of an area. So as the humidity is going up worldwide on average, the amount of energy being pumped up into these storms. So the storm that just went over us, uh, the, the cloud that was uh, like five miles from here that, that popped the tornado, had the tops of the tornado were at 54,000 feet. Jesus. No, that wasn't the top of all these storms. It's just the one that was right here. So immediately you can pull up the radar and get the instances of it. So I'm not guessing. I'm actually pulling the numbers that I, I saw. So the numbers that we're seeing for the thunderstorms, uh, because they have so much energy, we're seeing our storms go much higher and higher and higher. And uh, so when hail falls from 10,000 feet versus 20,000 feet, the hailstones are much larger. We're, uh, I remember my, my mother was in a lot of tornadoes when she was younger, and she would always talk about the first thing you get during a tornado is the hail. It's going to be like size of a half dollar. You've got to get out of it or you're just going to get pummeled. Uh, by the time we come up to, to these days, you're constantly seeing hailstones above an inch. You're constantly seeing hailstones above two inches. You're constantly seeing hailstones above three inches. And uh, just, a, uh, just a few years back, we had hailstones that were over the size of softballs. And yeah, that the one that I saw earlier seven. today that the woman was holding was yeah. was as big as her hand. You know what I mean? It was ridiculous. It was five inches across, six inches across. You know, it was huge. Yeah. And that's My great. The had, amount of damage that that's causing yeah. is just like that one part of it, that one little My part. And had, that's just what we know of damage. Yeah. Like that, what is that doing to the ecosystems, the animals that don't have, you know what I mean, a building to run into? And, and, you know, ways to cope with this. Yeah. My house had $24,000 damage. There was a pizza <laughs> hut about a block or two from here. And I mean, it, it hit there worse than it hit here. And yeah. I was down in the basement and we started hearing something. And I thought the cats were having a fight upstairs. And I could hear this flop, flop, flop all around. It just kept getting worse and worse. Go upstairs and I just see these huge, huge uh, hail balls. But we went down afterwards looking around the town and, and, uh, business is just totally stripped, you know, holes through the roofs, everything. And wow. um, so th now we're seeing even larger ones. The, the fact that we are able to have a second one like this, this close, is just unbelievable. As I, I wouldn't have expected a, a, you know, a derecho like this to happen until like August or September. And um, there's this uh, hitting way too often. Yeah. And it, this isn't the first one we've seen in the last few weeks. And so we had a tornado um, five miles north of us yesterday. And the weather is just peaked and ready to blow Fucking every day because it's got shit. so much energy popped up into it. And I don't see how the airlines are running with all of these. Uh, they, they actually call it uh, 
uh, convective uh, convective activity. But with all this going on, there's an awful lot of of worry that has to be going into the pilot's eyes. Of, Am I going to be able to make the flight? Am I going to make able to land safely? And just the yeah. fact that if you start off on a flight that's going to take four hours, you don't know if something like this is going to be waiting for you. It won't even be on on the the quest until a little bit later. That's uh, wild. It's crazy. I mean, so do you think that we're just accelerating it, or do you? you know, yeah, have... I would say in three years it'll probably be twice as bad. Where, where are the where are we going to be safe yeah. you know what i mean like where is it that is going to be the least likely that least will get hit place. by you know natural disasters like where is that well we need experts and we're running out of people that can take math to get through school to go into engineering yeah. uh we need to be able to help our people get through and we're not providing any help other than, like I say, I know a lot of these teachers. They are swamped. Their their students have been off for basically two years, uh, and you know, teaching has been very difficult. And so we've got this slug of two years going through the, the school system. It's going to take 10, 15 years to get through all these students, get them retrained. We need to be having national efforts about this. And we're talking about, hey, we need to send more people to war. We need to be doing things like this. We need to be doing things. Uh, all, all types of things that we're not supplying the right people to is, you know, we have, we have nuclear power plants that are going to be maintained for at least 50 to 60 years from now. We currently have most of our electrical engine or our, our nuclear engineering schools shut down. So we're going to have nobody to maintain this equipment to keep it safe. Jesus. And I'm not saying I want more nuclear plants, but I want people to be able to keep this equipment safe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We need to be able need, to maintain what's already, you know, like. We need people with training that be able to say, are, is there another way that we can do it before we go to nuclear? Uh, you know, are, are there another way we can do it? But mostly. So like there was one school in Iowa that built a, uh, not the entire building for, for students dorm, but they built a new student dorm. And they put in it a um, an area that was concreted. It was like a concrete bumper bunker made for like a, a nuclear blast. Yeah. And they got a lot of ridicule for it. Very shortly after they got done, uh, students were in it, and the tornado hit, and the students that made it to the bunker lived. Wow. So there was no more complaints about rebuilding it. More like that again. Right. Uh, so there was like. There was like a couple of students, I believe, that did not make it to the bumper that didn't believe that they should go go take safety. And uh, that's quite an issue, too, is, is Americans are a lot, a lot of times taught that it's wrong to do something safe. I mean, you should yeah. not wear a helmet when you bicycle or, or motorcycle. Um, you know, there was. Oh, I'm sorry. It's stuff coming in. Um, but uh, a lot of safety issues uh, just get totally ignored. Um, I'm sorry. Oh no, no! I, I this is completely interesting to me. It's like this uh, is <laughs> you have my attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I, yeah. I've been following the nuclear stuff, like nuclear accidents and nuclear proliferation and stuff like that since since the nineties when I was a activist in high school so it's eh, yeah it's a bit concerning especially as they age yeah, yeah i don't know enough ages. about the nuclear like i i i mean i know like the basics you know what i mean but i don't know enough about it to say whether i'm like you know like whether it could be safe or not or i i i honestly i don't feel educated enough in that topic to have uh an opinion that i could firmly you know say one way or the other or you know which which is better or not i just know what can happen why you know what i mean like we know what 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 can what can be 
you know, with, with human error, what can go wrong? And just, that's just the tip of the iceberg of what can go wrong. Um, well, we're not like, careful. We're not, we not have to be preventative. <laughs> I'm not claiming I'm a nuclear physicist or anything. <laughs> no, but, yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, just from, you know, following that stuff and also, uh, um, Remember the the radiation experiments that were part of MK Ultra that Clinton publicly apologized for in the nineties? Yep. There was a lot that, worse than MK Ultra. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know. Bring up MK I Ultra, it, and I view that more as a diversion. Okay, than Department of Energy thing. programs. Uh, department uh, of, of uh, I don't know, I can't remember which department it was, but there was one that I found really, really disgusting was where especially um, originally they were supposed to do the, the testing. They wanted to know what it would do to a population. And they decided that um, they would irradiate the, the, a black neighborhood uh, near Boston uh, so that anything that was bad would go out to sea, wouldn't go across the rest. I mean, significant radiation. And um, they mistakenly actually did it across the country. Across the country, they did control groups and they did yep. actual uh, uh, radiate radiation groups, and uh, they were making it look like they were spraying for mosquitoes, and they were actually spraying strontium and other uh, ra radioactive debris. Yeah, yeah, people. I know about and, those too. Uh, <laughs> they weren't supposed to do it, but Minneapolis and uh, and uh, uh, St. Louis got significant dosages and. Uh, uh, so, I mean, we're going to have cancers and stuff. I mean, we did, and we will. Well, um, yeah, I think about all the increases of cancers. cancers so, mm -hmm. but I, I do have some, like some. It's combination, but yeah, it's just. I do have some nuclear experience, and uh, I am not somebody that is very pro. Uh, mostly, I think the problems I see with nuclear power are that it is a for profit operation. And the for-profit always takes precedence to the for safety. Yep. Yes. And uh, so I do, if we have to provide it, and if there is one scenario that I believe we need, well, actually two, that we need nuclear power for. But that doesn't mean it has to be online and ready to run. It just needs to be able to be turned on. So turning on a nuclear reactor would take like three weeks. Uh, it's, it's not going to be something that's going to happen overnight. So... If if Yellowstone goes off, or the the, the three super volcanoes by California, or we have a uh, a, a, a meteor strike, we might not be able to use our normal growing methods for two to three years. Yeah, this hasn't happened probably since like uh, five forty six, but we do need to have some types of alternative power in place for this. Maybe not enough to supply all of the power for everything we do now. We do need to have a way to have have a people live. And the Base other power thing energy. Really stupid was Ronald Reagan. Base level. Our, our national food stocks. So we used to have enough food stored every day that we could feed every human mm. being for 10 years. Why mm. 10 years? And the reason to 10 years was if we had uh, if we had a super volcano or we had a spike. So we're looking for the ability to handle twice uh, the load that whatever happened in 546. If it happened again, so that we could go six years and enough time then and get back on track to, to recover. And uh, we should be, we're hardly making enough food to get by as it is now. Right. We should be talking up 10 years. And it shouldn't just be for the congressmen and whatever hookers they bring to the bar. It needs to be for every human being in, in this country. And we should have enough for helping some of the others too. Well, and look at that. Should be taken. Look at that seed bank that's in, was it Greenland or somewhere? It's in uh, Svalbard. Um, I'm a and, member. <laughs> oh, really? Really? Is it is it open to the public? No, uh, we're, we're the only organization uh, other than, than the seed bank that is actually has unlimited access. I wow. can't go there. 
but the uh, the people that are up upstairs, I pay my twenty five bucks a month. <laughs> so if if everything goes to shit, I mean, they got the seed bank there, but it's not open for public. So what what would they be doing with it? There's a problem with it. Yeah, and that's what I thought. <laughs> seed bank when it was put in place is not meeting the temperatures that they thought it would be. Oh, I forgot the about that. Ballbard is getting to be too warm. They want it to be never above like minus 20 or something. Yeah, that's why they put it into the, the glacier, right? So like, like right now our... And the glacier yeah, is I, melting. SFT, yes, I do. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not the best one, but <laughs> there's a shortage of teachers, you know? They take anybody. Oh, snorking. Oh my God, stop. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one of my uncles was actually a history teacher in high school, like for a high school. He was also a Taekwondo uh, teacher and a um, Boy Scout leader. And he was, he was the family um, genealogist. I think he still is. That's so I, cool. I know about some teachers. <laughs> uh, the historians are telling me that anything in my family history uh, before the year 1000 should be taken with a grain of salt. Um, so on one side of my family, I got it back pretty far. So the what the record is, it back to minus or 300 B, or BC, what, I can't remember they call it now. Uh, and I was told that pretty much somewhere around the year 1000, they started embellishing it much. So about every historian I tell me is like, yeah, you can take all that with a grain of salt. Some of it might be true, some of it might not be. But because they controlled the, the, the fountain of truth, we don't know what they uh, changed or not. But on my mother's side, I've got uh, a majority of it back to uh, 14, 1485 or 1465, somewhere like that. And uh, uh, on my father's side, it's just one part of my family. We hardly have any. But then the other side, uh, their family is quite well documented way back yeah um on my mother's side i think my uncle traced the baldwin name all the way back to uh king baldwin the first king of jerusalem the first uh templar king of jerusalem and i think there's some um nice templars on the french side of my family and the uh direct descendant of uh one of the founders of Hartford, Connecticut. My family <laughs> was traced back to Dutch, <laughs> the Dutch settlement of Schenectady, the Dutch uh, fur trapper um, settlement of Schenectady. So, yeah, it's it. I I have some pretty wild history, family history. I think the most unique thing in mine was there was a ten-year newspaper article about finding my my family by written by uh, the reporter was that that's what they did they found out how to go for it how to verify and when he retired the, the uh, newspaper gave him a trip to go back to the family archives in denmark to actually go back and see the where the family farm and all that was uh that's they cool. really had fun they got there he got to see the books they pulled out the books and they find out that all of the women in the village were swapped out with italian women in an experiment because after the after the long voyages there was a lot of dwarfism so they they thought let's and they, they first they thought it might be the blondes so they oh my god dark-haired <laughs> women from from italy to that place and if you go there so, uh, i say i'm i'm 60 61 years old and my eyebrows are still dark but my hair is kind of light so it was a big thing of theirs they all had a lot of italian features <laughs> <laughs> so my my uh my grandmother's uh cousin was so disappointed they found out he was italian <laughs> <laughs> but he, they had the records all the way back even farther that they could have gone and i really enjoyed being there but i didn't have much time there because i was there for work and uh, i'd never heard that story before that's wild and that's why we brought rhubarb to the united states because rhubarb was not native to denmark it came from huh. Italy, and we know the boat Love that it came on. And that is we so have crazy. Rhubarb that people kill for. I did. I didn't want to wow. tell you guys. I didn't want to tell you guys this, but uh, I've got a theory that snork 
and Shelley, since their lineage goes back so well and is documented so so uh, succinctly that they're obviously Illuminati. <laughs> you know, funny you say that. <laughs> oh God! There it is. I knew it. <laughs> no, my on my mom's side, there's a bunch of Masons. <laughs> But that's, like that's what I expected. Snork was going to just hold up his Mason card. Like, no, <laughs> but you know, they're know. also like leaders of their community and stuff like that. So sure. and, you know, like sharecroppers and you know hemp farmers and stuff like that, and yeah. Uh, yeah. or hops farmers, I, maybe both. I can't remember. Yep. But yeah, <laughs> go back far. Yeah, go back far that's enough. Funny. I got Masons. I almost think that my grandfather was a Mason too. He was a he was an engineer on the DNH railroad. He actually worked um, in the world's largest roundhouse in Oneana with my other grandfather. That I actually just found this out about. He uh, both my grandfathers worked um, in the roundhouse. Hmm. That's really cool. That's really cool. Be in the same space. <laughs> Yeah, I've got a bunch of stuff, like, when I talk about it, sometimes it feels like it's, like, unbelievable. And then I start realizing I did not have a normal childhood growing up. <laughs> Who does, you know? Like, I used to go to the Cooperstown Historical Library with my mom and my uncle to research documents for our family genealogy when I was growing up for fun. <laughs> yeah, no, that just like, means that, that? That, just, that just means you're a nerd. That's okay. That's the, research that's in your thing. It's in your, you know, yeah. that's in your lineage. Like to you encourage know? that sort of thing. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. I wish I knew more about my, you know, about my family history. Like, um, I grew up without knowing my my dad or my my dad's side of the family, basically, or a lot of the family that I had. And I was moved from Washington State um, to New Orleans and then, you know, all over the place, all up the eastern uh, seaboard because my stepdad was military in the Coast Guard. And so I didn't even know my dad until I was like 16 years old. So I. I, I grew up not knowing like this huge like aspect of my life. And I wish I wish I knew more. Oh, excuse me. I, I know I have um, you know, like Scandinavian, like I, I have, you know, like I apparently I have cousins that are still in like Sweden and 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 you know, like that, you know, like that area of the world, but I don't know much about it. I, I really don't. And I, I would love to be able to have that, you know, that lineage and that history. I think that's really cool to, to have. You know what? I just realized that I think the marmot behind you is actually the same marmot as the thumbnail. Mm. <laughs> that was completely random. <laughs> In breaking other news, breaking Mormon news. Breaking Mormon news. All right. I don't know. I was just uh thanks, Pete. <laughs> he's sitting right here, so like he's on his uh stand. So he's like he's like he's just sitting here listening in. He was dancing a few minutes ago, like really it looked like he was gonna break a neck. Um, break his neck, like yeah, he like whips his head back. I That's like oatmeal funny. cookies too, Drew. Oh, me too. I, I want some oatmeal cookies. What I've been really yes, wanting is some cornbread. Not oh, southern like cornbread. cornbread. There's nothing wrong with southern cornbread, but it's no, completely God. different from northern cornbread. Yeah, yeah it is. Northern well, cornbread I've is had, more like a steak. Yeah. And I've just really been wanting the northern style cornbread. Uh, and uh, Let's get some mutual cornbread, eh? Mutual it's cornbread. Dense. It's, I can't it's stand dense. up, so I can't cook. Right. <laughs> oh. We're gonna need uh we're gonna need some cornbread at Snork's stack. Who is in that area? <laughs> like let's let's get snorks. None of that cornbread. crisper corn either, okay? You make it the real northern cornbread, god damn it. <laughs> I can actually go get um 
what would be called uh, a more heirloom corn. So I've, I've got a 10 mile by 10 mile area right right in the south side of town that's all Amish. Oh, sweet. oh that's really oh, nice. Awesome. So yeah, all that old great. school seed. They don't I'm an Amish much, country, so I got more too. Speed. That's amazing. Yeah, I, they use all of their speed, then they don't care. <laughs> right. Yeah, I see. Uh, every time I go shopping at like Aldi's or something, I I always run into at least a few Amish people. <laughs> Are you near Highway Twenty or Har Highway Eighty? Or wait a minute. In New York. What? Yeah. What does it? Eighty goes all the way to New York, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But it, like, uh, it, I've I, never. It I, doesn't I, go all the way across though. I yeah, want to say 20. Drive. Start with Highway 20 out yeah. here. And then there's a place where as the women turn whatever age it is, then they get sent off to other. So when, they go when the Rump women Springer. get to a certain age, they Rump go off to get married. Oh, yeah. So there is a, a line where they constantly move, move by by like a white minivan. And there usually be two minivans traveling, traveling together. And it's just like there are so many of them moving back and forth along this highway system that I can't seem to pull into a convenience store or gas station between uh, Iowa and Pennsylvania without <laughs> being seen one, well, as long as it's on that path. Uh, <laughs> Nor Norwich is uh, kind of, it's like on the edge of the southern tier. So I'm like 45 minutes from D Binghamton. So I'm not that far from the Pennsylvania border. I'm like... Yeah, Probably the southern border, right? Maybe like just under two hours from the from the Pennsylvania border mm. in central New York. Yep, yep. That's crazy. I I feel like we need to look at what does work for the Amish and the Mennonites, like and and look at how they do things as a community. Uh, doesn't mean that we need to have all the religious aspect of it, but the way that they do structure the things and they work together and they make it work and they grow their own food and they don't participate in this outer society. Like, I, I feel like that's the only way the parallel societies is going to be the way that we are able to do this. But then, you know, we, we can't just go and ignore all the the crazy that's happening around us. You I've know, seen like that all coming to an end. Uh, I'm, I'm driving by the Amish. So, like I said, it's my whole path. Over a third of my path, maybe a quarter of my path, is uh, through the Amish land. And what I'm seeing all the time is they're no longer going out with the stuff and and doing all of the farming. And this is like one of the most conservative ones. They're paying people with tractors to come in and do it for them. Uh, they're no longer uh, totally unelectric. So um, most of them don't, they want wires going to the house, but they'll put up a windmill and they'll have, have electricity going into the house from the windmill. Uh -huh. uh, all kinds of things I've seen. When I was a child, they did not use vehicles. And a lot of other areas were using vehicles. There was a, two or three years ago, there was a, a, a school buggy that got hit. So then they decided that they would, uh, uh, put up a, a service where uh, every farmer would put up a place where they could go use their cell phone. So they'd go out, out to this place that they were okay for use a cell phone, call basically the Amish cab system, come out, take them in the town, come back. So it would save them like a half a day, not having to drive in the town and back. And I, as I'm seeing them start to get used to all the conveniences, I'm basically seeing the Amishness fall away. What I am seeing them is, I'm seeing them become a cult of uh, uh, basically almost slave labor, where I'm seeing, you know, one house is expanded to have multiple children and their children's children and children's children. So when I see, and every every two miles, there's basically a grade school or a school. So I see like 20 students coming out of one 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 house walking down the two miles to get to a uh a place and just so many people and where i've not seen seeing they all used to work on farms now they mostly work construction they work day jobs so the trucks come out pick them up take them into town for the labor uh and then at night bring them back home again 
So yeah, I've seen that a lot in the Cooperstown area. Yeah, so they are basically becoming this labor pool. Mm-hmm. I do not know enough about the Amish system. Do they get to keep much of it? Do they have to give so much of it away? Do they get any of it? I'm not exactly. I think they, they do everything collectively, don't they? So it probably goes to the. To I, the I'm not the, sure the top of the hierarchy, and is this you know? But well, I'm seeing them really? use cell phones more and more yeah, and more. They're I no longer to. going to the little outlet. I'm seeing them flip out cell phones and they are getting exposure to what the other people do. They're going to the stores. They're seeing the stuff. I I see Amish people buying ice cream. I did not see that when I was a child. Oh, uh, it's pretty wild, you know, going to the grocery store and seeing the Amish buying butter, of all things. The one thing everybody knows the Amish for is turning butter. <laughs> Seriously. And buying milk. <laughs> This is why that's I'm crazy. Now. It's like, don't you guys got the cow? Like they're 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 getting pulled into like it's like it's like we're I want to pull away from the society, kind of like where we are, and they're like kind of pulling into it, and it's like, can we just find a good balance in the it's in between? Like the insidious like, capitalism thing just will will taint everything eventually. And then you got the Amish that are involved in uh, drug running. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. They got like a fucking mob. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, there's, there's like gangsters. They tried, to, they tried to glorify that shit on the, I know. On, the, on the TV a few years ago. That was funny. Another thing I see out here is Amish are renting out their services to take care of horses for people that live in town. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of people that are, you know, I want a horse, I want a horse, I want a horse. They don't want a horse. They don't want to take care of it. They will rent a uh, Amish place. And I go by all these places that have these really fancy horses that are basically just kept there. For sure. Uh, and you'll see the people get out and just ride ride the horse up and down the street and take it back and go back to town for a week and not even think about their horse. Um, My aunt, uh, my aunt's life partner so until he died. Time. Uh, until he died, he he um, boarded racehorses. Yeah. They're the painted, painted uh, racehorses, whatever they're called. He used to board them, but he wasn't Amish. But um, I, like I know, I know what you're talking about. But I would not want. <laughs> this is gonna sound bad, but I would not want the Amish around my animals, especially unsupervised. Mm. Yeah, I've heard. Yeah, I've heard they, of the abuse. The abuse yeah, that they're they very were. abusive. Oh yeah, I, I I don't I don't know how, what all they do. I, I I know of some cases of the sexual abuse of the animals, where it's gotten. Oh, I wasn't even talking about that part. Holy shit! Yeah, but yeah, they do that too. <laughs> <clears throat> it's anywhere where there's such severe oppression. People tend to, you know, they 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 tend to do something that you, it, it just oh man up the ante. It's just like there's always like there's and always and another way that they find to do the same thing, like do to do something that's just because they're being oppressed and it's unnatural oppression that you're having like yeah. it's not natural a dang old cow humper man i'll tell you what you're gonna get move say it's gonna take me a couple <laughs> minutes to get to the bathroom i've got a i forgot and uh put my my crutch on the other side of the room so uh -oh. <laughs> i gotta go to the bathroom i gotta take a little break <laughs> okay oh, yeah man okay yeah, take a break We're good Sounds like um, something I would do. Actually, I have done that stuff before. <laughs> I mean, so I mean, like, so it's, I'm not saying that the the Amish are like the, the the best example for everything, but we can look at what does work within a community, what does work within these parallel structures, what does work, and we need to take the best parts. And, yeah, and you know, and not, really nuance conversation yeah, about it, maybe, and maybe figure it out. They're not Maybe. the only communities out there that do that. Like, look at all this, all you know, as many types of you know, self relatively self-sustaining communities or 
even like extended family, small unit communities, mm-hmm. and uh, just kind of collate from all that. And maybe we just we just ease <sighs> off of the uh, cow humping. You know, a little. Yeah, just, you know, just, I'm just a saying. A little, like no, let's, let's not do that to the cows. All right. Yeah, right. Fine. It's fit. That sounds fair. A little, like, Drew. No. Are you? Uh, you cool with that? Uh, <laughs> what? SFT. I don't know. We're just talking in here, okay? We're spitballing. <laughs> Peaches. Peaches. Tell them. Just get in. Um, Baba Yaga made a good point. People seem to think that ancient civilizations were advanced, and that's what that's what we're taught anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't think that that's yeah, I, I don't think, think that's that, accurate at all. I think human history is uh a hell of a lot older than we get we think it is or we yeah. say it is. Absolutely. And I also think that um ancient technology is a hell of a lot more advanced than what we have now. Yeah. Because we still can't explain how they did all this stuff. We we don't have the technology to do what they did. Well, right. there's some pretty crazy things. Like uh, there's some there's some videos and and some information that I've started to kind of like look into. Uh, like not really a deep dive into it, but where they're moving things with certain you know with certain frequencies, and the monks are able to like move huge boulders and and do all this stuff and there's also you know like at some point i do want to get into this or find somebody that that knows you might know about you know the giant civilizations that that you know the giant people that that were part of this planet that ho 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 yeah i mean they definitely found they're bones of quote-unquote giants that are humanoid they're that could move the things that we're saying is impossible, but they could they could very. But we also easily don't know how they. I mean, they would. Ha- they're similar similar enough shape where they could say, you know, their brain was developed similar to ours, but we don't know what kind of capability that is. Uh-huh. I mean, look at the Neanderthals. I mean, for how long have we been talking about cavemen being uncivilized? You know, brutish. All this, and they find out that they find these caves of Neanderthals that were incredibly clean, and they had, you know, different rooms for different reasons. They had like a sleeping room, and then they had like a yeah. cooking room, right. and one area for a gathering. They even had like, you know, remains in the very back of the cave. They had a cemetery in the back of their cave, that and they beautiful, were- beautiful, uh, you know, interior design, and they were very metro. They made tools. Uh, it's it's theorized that um, mm-hmm. uh, Neanderthals were the ones to teach humans how to make tools because they were doing it for how long? Look at how smart humans. we are. We're so smart. We're making ourselves go extinct, Shelly. You know That's what? how smart well, we are. The thing is, they they cared for their sick and their elderly. They buried their dead in their caves. You know, they have that connection with, you know, a different, their brain, I think their brain structure is just different enough where they probably have more empathy. Mm. That's just my own theory. I, I'd have to brush up on this stuff, but they're, they're probably, as far as like empathy goes, probably closer to bonobos than humans. Mm. I think it's wild that, uh, you know, among the animal killing kingdom, how many, how many animals left to their own design to, to, to source food or whatever will find some kind of tool or, or just modify something to to meet the need? And that that thing right there is just like the spark of like sentience. You know what I mean? It seems to me like, well, you problem solve that fucking shit. You know, you got the stick to stick down the fucking tube to get the termites out or whatever, you know, and it's just a bird or whatever. That's That's amazing to me that. That animals can just like, eh. let well, me think about this. Let me think about this for a second. How do I get these bugs out? You know, you know, as far as far as like the um, quote unquote giant, so you know, bones discovered in some yeah. places. Yeah, giant there's people. also <laughs> there's also the um, was the the little people or whatever of yeah. uh, it was a Java Island or something. There's oh, tiny oh, people too. 
Well, yeah. there's, there's, so there's Native there's American there's tales of them. Yeah. Yes. The, the, the crow. The crow. Is that in Newfoundland? In the Crow Indians. Uh, that's what they, you know, they call them. Uh, that's, that's where Peter Jackson comes from. Right? They, they have, they, there's a whole, you know, there's, there, there's like, um, oh my gosh, what did they call them? They called them like the little people, basically, little but they people. they were they were the pygmy, you know. Yeah, and they said that something. they existed, huh? Hobo something is their name. Um, yeah, there's a lot of homo somethings. No, hobo. Uh, hobo. Uh, hobo. Yeah. Hobbits. <laughs> well, they, they nicknamed them hobbits when they were. Yeah, them. yeah. Okay. From, what are the hobbit people? They're from the land of Peter Jackson's mind. I don't but know. But really, uh, where where a lot of people are only totally. looking at the European versions. So uh, after uh, people left Africa, they split into seventeen. Not just not just Neanderthals. They split into seventeen at least. I mean, that doesn't mean we've discovered them all. No, but not, a lot I don't of the interesting ones are coming from um, the. Uh, uh, other places, and I've been watching a lot of stuff about what they discovered from the Denisovans. So uh, a lot of the Northern Europeans are have a lot of relationships to the Neanderthals, but a lot of people that are from Asia have a lot of uh, uh, ancestry with the Denisovans. Yes, so, that's, that's the word I was trying to think of. So as the Denisovans and the Neanderthals mm -hmm. met, things happened together. So as the different people developed uh their different traits and stuff as they mixed together that they tended didn't not always tended to keep the best options of them so we're not all identical in fact i like to tell people uh that you know like we can say one race was this way one race is that way what i like to tell people is that we are all different so our genetic makeup even in one community is huge uh, the differences and we we tend to think of what's the genetic uh, it's homo floriensis <laughs> yeah yeah oh, i'm thinking hobbit but homo floriensis okay. is the island one uh the hobbits but the uh uh the uh the difference of every people so we can go into a community i can go into a community of, of people that appear to all be like like me a, a person that's not dark enough to be white and uh it can be a person is not dark enough to be white. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. I thought I caught that right. <laughs> there are there are differences, uh, all kinds of genetic differences. Sure. And when we start saying that we're all alike, we are terribly hurting people that they move to an area and might not realize, hey, all people are alike. No. They, some people, if they're living up north, they need extra vitamin D. Some people, if they're living down south, they need to stay out of the sun, like me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, yep. I mean, like, have you ever heard of the dumb blonde complex? That is real. So if you get too much sunlight, was if you're absolute blonde, when you're really child, it uh, changes the makeup of how the different chemicals are related to uh, that hit on your and it damages your nerves so wow. dumb blonde syndrome is real and what what happens what happens is by <laughs> the dumb blonde thing is, is real identical. hold on I have to tell this to my that's sister. a breaking news <laughs> that is that, that is crazy so is that but, for only particular area like like it's worldwide we all have differences but like i can say i could go to a community where we all look alike and we're yeah. going to have different blood types. We're going to have different things we can eat. We're going to have all kinds of different. We have to stop thinking of, hey, I'm this. I have all of these features. Right. And it might be the fact that genetics, we tend to think, hey, I'm half Italian. I'm half, half. No, you are a mix. We don't know which of these genes you got from which one. And two, two generations past, what didn't make it on to the next part? So you, you theoretically have a source from Italy. Uh, yeah. And uh, so like my, my son on his DNA test, being Italian, didn't show up. Hmm. I mean, it was more like his DNA was more like our, our uh, mailman's, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. 
<laughs> That's a good one. Wah, wah, Are you wah. paying attention? <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, so we we are way too quick to try to make our things, and I think we would all live together in a lot more harm, har, har, uh, harmony if we all came to the thing that we are all different instead yeah. of hey, I'm this, you're not, I'm better, and we got to say hey, no, you know. 30% of people from Norway can't eat wheat. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait a minute. Norway isn't, aren't the older regions? Why are 30% able to and 30% not? There's a division right there. And so we have to be looking at how can we best handle everything. So if we make our diet all dependent on wheat, we're going to ex exclude people. Yeah. Uh, there's a, a lot of people that cannot have grapefruit. There are a lot of people who can't have different items of food, and we have to be really careful that we have food options available for everybody, and a lot of people that aren't even told that they have things that they shouldn't be eating. And I'm I'm having a a, a chemical reaction to something right now. Uh oh, oh no! <laughs> I know for a fact that for years of eating uh, pasta and sauce, red sauce was like super harmful for me and like it like uh activated gout in my fucking big toe like so bad sometimes i would get it really really bad from from those those meals generally and i've had sausage or something like other things would trigger it but like spicy things but i noticed it after i stopped eating that like i didn't i don't eat that anymore i don't have that pain in my toe anymore it doesn't doesn't bother me at all ever yeah, so I, I I I can't have grapefruit. I really mm -hmm. love grapefruit drinks. And I, I, oh yeah, and you can't have it. No, I like the grapefruit too. And some there's also I remember we were talking before about how Skyla, my uh, daughter, had COVID and she lost her taste buds. She's still even with that um, uh, what was it, L cartiline? Huh? Did you use alpha lipoic acid? Yeah. Yeah. She still can't get her taste back. Sorry, but she she was like, she was like, oh, but mom, I looked because she looked it up and you know, like she's she's like you know, she's like me, you know, I just very, very, you know, inquisitive. I want to know. And she was like, Yeah, they're actually doing this for studies and the the burnt um orange peels that they're doing, they're trying to do that to try to get people's taste buds back. I mean, it's crazy, like that. Since January, she she just doesn't have like taste. She can she can she yeah. can tell when something is like really spicy or like really like to an extreme, but she doesn't have taste like for the for the most part. Probably it's pretty much so just weird. the pepper and, and the um, salt. That's what? I keep trying to do, get what? Yeah, well, she's and she's like, she's trying to push her 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 diet. Like, okay, relax. Things that like she wouldn't normally have eaten before. She's trying to push it and see if like you know and 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 try to do that. It's it's so weird. But I wanted to give you that update while I while I thought of it. Peaches, peaches, no. Um. So have you look? Have you seen the the giant? remains that they have and the giant skeletons snark i don't know if i've seen the ones you're talking about but throughout throughout in industry there are many things that eating th different local things can damage uh pituitary gland and things like that in most cases of giantism are actually cases of pituitary or other failures of of the uh, natural endocrine system so what could happen is if you go into a period of time where, um, uh, let's say like after the 546 event, where people were basically less than substance living for, for three to four years. And um, when you have these different environmental variables, you're going to have brain damage, all kinds of damage to your system. And so if we look at people that are from uh, like the Netherlands, Belgium, that area, um, even up into some parts of Denmark, there was 
times where there were huge shifts in the size of people. Uh, if we look over to um, to China, a lot of the people that we get for the uh, basketball players are people from, are from areas that have damage to different areas. So they're growing because they lost their ability to regu regulate growth. And um, so would these be like the more northern uh, areas? Can you please close that? Well, I in only certain know regions, of, I only know there. of a few. I, 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 we would have to pass it to somebody in a different uh, um, field than myself for, for, for better knowledge there. Like, I, I know about like how the geography and like, um, you know, all the climate, uh, climate stuff can impact, um, you know, a bunch of different features. But um, I I can't re I can't remember. I think I learned what year was it? Well, five forty six was uh, the last major geological event that. Involved. Yeah, I think I learned something about that in in the um the South America um the Incan area of South America in my Inca class, but it's it's was so way back I can't remember. For, for people that aren't familiar with uh, what happened then, basically 546 was Ragnarok. Uh, the um, everything was so bleak through most of the uh, most of Europe and through everywhere else that a lot of people died, and uh, a lot of the stories of of the Earth being consumed and dying were from that actual e event that that you know was in that that era. Um, so they, they actually started, you know, a good leader will take advantage of, of a fact and claim that they were the person who solved the problem and got the sun to come back. Yep. And, uh, so, uh, <laughs> that's really founded in a lot of the systems that we have that are so messed up was how things were. And uh, somebody before was talking about, you know, uh, their, their crazy um, uh, Swedish uh, relatives. A lot of my relatives were some very, very bad people who had a lot, a lot of power. And uh, uh, I try not to be like them. Uh, but uh, in fact, somebody could probably pronounce Ragnarok properly. I don't. <laughs> but the uh, when I was. Uh, driving through um, through Denmark, I would constantly see uh, signs to go visit my relatives. <laughs> wow! Yeah, I I I definitely want to learn more about my uh, my Scandinavian, you know, my history. I know we have, um, you know, there, there's there's Swedish and some, you know. Um, there are some, I think there's some Dutch. It's, it's all, I'm all from all over, over there, but my grandmothers were, uh, Hildy and Elsie or something. Pretty much. <laughs> um, my, my ancestry is almost every country in, in Europe. It's interesting and to know your history. Um, and just from what, what we have about every country in Europe. And um, nobody's nobody's genealogy is going to be boring. You're going to, you're going to find at least a few, a few stories that are really really interesting. <laughs> well, the, now, during, I have, during the, have you the, heard of the North. black Swedes? Black Swedes? Have you heard that term, Snort? Um, and I, I remember when I was young, I remember hearing about black Irish. They were not people with African ancestry. They were people who were not um, either not Catholic or not not locals. They were like somebody that moved there from a different area. So there was a lot of people that that weren't the normal Irish. They would speak like them. They would look like them, but uh, there were different things. I'm not sure if if I, I remember that after all these years correctly. I think uh, Irish travelers are also called Black Irish too. That might be. So the, those are, they're called travelers and the rest of the, 
The rest of the Europe, I think they're called Roma. Yeah, Irish gypsies. Mm -hmm. But um, I have Irish too. Uh, my mom always called us kiss black Irish growing up. Okay. Because of our darker features, of our darker yep. Irish features. So. Yep. Same with the black, the black Swedes. Uh, my my dad always said it, and I always thought, you know, he was just being racist or something. You know, it was just like whatever, dad. Um, but but I, dad, you racist. No, I really did. I really thought that that's what he was doing, and uh, what what it from what I've what I've understood is that um, it's because when I was, if I show you a picture from when I was little, like I look like a little Swedish baby. I, I blonde hair with 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 uh, you know blonde ringlet curls. You know, I'm very fair skinned. Another mailman's but, daughter, huh? But my as I aged like around three years old, my hair turned darker and my eyes changed from blue to hazel. And it, it's really, I was, I always thought that was so weird that, you know, like I completely transitioned and, you know, I, I still look the same, but, you know, slowly it, you can see that, you know, uh, with the pictures that, that I, you know, my hair, my hair just darkened up. And so I found out that it was cause we're black sweets. And I guess it's from being from the Northern part of Sweden and like the lineage that kind of like goes down or something like that is what he was saying. So Northern part of Sweden would be, I'm forgetting the term, the deer herders. Yep. And I forgot the term for the deer herders. They raised the reindeers. I, yeah, I did. I did want to go back to where my family was from, um, for, right before they came back to, uh, um, right before they came to the United States. And uh, so while I was there, I didn't have my full family history at the time. I had my mother's, but I didn't have my father's. So we stopped at a place. And just about a quarter mile from where we we're at was a, a castle from my father's side that basically became the source of the European monarchy. And uh, it's gone. I mean, they've they've taken the, all the stones and mostly away and all. So only the keep is left. And I feel so bad that I didn't go see it because I just we we only had such a, a very low time to be there that I, we had to. I wanted to go see where the farm was right. and uh, the farm was torn down five years before I got there and was turned into a McDonald's. Oh man. Damn it. So and close. The, oh, the that neighbor sucks. Showed me their farm, which was the only place that was still left from, I mean, we're talking about way back. Uh, so on my mother's side, they had, they had a, 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 a it could just go there. A, a, it was, like, like grass roof but inside it was completely modern and uh they were so nice people uh they had a school beside them that they, they maintained but the, the people there were so nice and it was basically everybody at that time that was less than about 40 spoke perfect english everybody was above 40 didn't so like their daughter was translating for us and they got in contact and they called the historians. They remembered my grandmother's cousin going there. And they say, no, that, that's the place that was just turned into McDonald's. And the rubble pile was still there when I went, when I was there. And, uh, but they, the place to the south was what I really like. And it's available on Google Maps. You can pull it up and you can see this really cool place. And they're using it as a cow pasture. And it was like the most defendable place that you could put boats out and get out to other places really quickly. Uh, so. Wow! Oh, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy how history gets just wiped right that, over. That is a That's thing the that I want to see. I don't want to go see the Queen of England's um, mansion in the middle of. of uh, I want to go see the old Scotland places that and Ireland places that are really old that are still standing, at least partially because of how well they were built and whatever. I want to see that stuff. 
Now, I don't want to see a bunch of people that are in uh, suits that make them warm up to 100 degrees until they almost die and got all kinds of other tourists uh, torturing them. I, I want to see the real stuff. And I, I like that when we were popping around. Um, like the and, real, and, the real, like the real root of, of the country and, and the places and the people, not just like what they want you to see, what they want you to look at. Yeah. Or getting lost. <laughs> we, we really should not have been driving in. And <laughs> I, I was, I was not the person driving there. We didn't know what some signs meant. We were driving downtown in some areas that weren't supposed to have cars. <laughs> Oops. They're like, there goes those damn tourists again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, so oh my god. We just that drove off into so the country crazy. and uh, so we had had a blast. We didn't have that much time off while we were there. So and again, I wasn't there for, for vacation, I was there for work. So Uh, Wobbly Boost said, I just turned 600 empty beers into a carton of beer. <laughs> LOL, magic. Oh, gosh. Oh, want to hear something wild? Yeah. Uh, of course. <laughs> so, when uh, Harry Potter first came out the movie, like, when they were filming it, uh, my boss at the time, his last name is Percy, and he's a direct descendant of the Percy family, that owned the castle where a lot of Harry Potter was filmed. Hmm. And he just went on and on and on <laughs> about it. Because he was like really big into Harry Potter too. And the guy was like 10 years older than me. <laughs> Imagine like this like 30 some odd year old, old guy in 2001 going on and on about it. <laughs> <laughs> A little sauce. A little. Yeah. That must have been like, yeah. Yeah, he was my interesting boss. I had some uh, interesting connections. Like, yeah. So Baba Yaga has a question for you, Snork. Uh, she wants oh. to know what you think of the food plant fires. Pretty suspicious to me. Uh, <laughs> I mean... Yeah. If it wasn't, I would question. <laughs> I'd be like, what? <laughs> no, um... I'm seeing a lot that aren't on the news. So, yes. um, I don't, our eggplants, uh, places like this, are being bombed. Well, after Cedar Rapids, we lost all kinds of stuff. And now um, we're seeing huge, huge deficits in the amount of chicken and beef and even pork. Yeah. So, and right now, after what happened today, we won't know until a, a few days. But I suspect if we lost a huge portion of our grain, that this area that where, where it got hit the worst is where almost all of the chicken eggs that are specifically for making vaccines are. So if we lost that area, we're going to be seeing a huge reduction. We're, we're talking about 2 million doses of vaccine per day is what they're uh, capable of producing so right. we're we're talking about major problems maybe we're not going to see another version of, of the vax but um uh eggplant production we're losing all kinds of pr production and uh, we have a problem that a lot of our areas are either jewish immigrants or mexican immigrants and they're getting hit and shut down. So like um, we have a town that had uh, one of the major producers of beef in the area. Uh, right. They came and they arrested everybody, deported them. Oh. And it was like 600 families while, they, while their children were in schools came and took their kit. Oh yeah, I remember that happening. Uh, oh, that was nuts. It, when you go to this town, it's, nice. it's like, strange that all of a sudden you see all of you don't see a lot of jewish people in iowa you go to that town they have a jewish newspaper uh and you go to the same town they have a, a norwegian newspaper <laughs> and so there's norwegians uh 
and, and a lot of them are ones that aren't aren't more than a generation from their family having coming here wow. and so it is it is bizarre seeing all of that oh that's definitely interesting uh sputnik v seemed available in summer of 2020. Uh, i don't know sputnik v is that the a russian the yeah russian? that's the that's the russian COVID vaccine oh okay I, yeah i don't know it uh the russians when we were getting into all kinds of stuff they were uh instead of antibiotics uh the russians immediately went into vaccines and for a long time they were extremely ahead of us when it came to making vaccines well look at look at cuba and what what they've done with vaccine technology and stuff mm -hmm. like but that's uh, completely out of my area the only thing the, well, i've ever the, done or or like if somebody yeah, be says, careful where we go with this on youtube <laughs> okay so i will say uh, as far as like cuban healthcare in general yeah they had to work around the embargo for decades upon decades upon decades mm -hmm. part of big part of the embargo was access to you know medicine and stuff so they had to figure stuff out for themselves and uh and i personally think in a lot of regards it's better health care oh yeah it's better uh some of the stuff is just better treatments better science because it they they had to think more creatively out of the box and innovation that, comes yeah, with that yeah yeah not just uh, like profit motive I, I put up a share there. Uh, so like, uh, I do things, have respect for Cuba. <laughs> different yeah. things like this, like uh, just learning how to use magnets to increase how they work and work together. This was for a, uh, actually for an MRNA project, but I was not dealing with, with how they made that. I was dealing with how do I make it go into one cell? Oh, so I'm, I'm not biologically inclined. Iris asking who the guests are. Oh, who, who, they came late. I can't hear. Oh. oh. I think he's just mumbling to himself. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, That's Steve was just saying I should give an update on what we're what we're talking about. We're just yeah, kind of having some out loud. <laughs> just, yeah. Just spitballing you guys. Like, uh, pay no attention to the guy. Oh yeah, like I said, I have no, no, uh, no medical experience. <laughs> they just needed somebody to get something to a very fine point. That's all. Well, you know, like having all these like mystery things going on with my health my whole life that I've had to like do research into because like virtually every doctor was like, I don't, I don't know how to deal with you. I've never seen anything like this before. I had <laughs> like, doctors tell me I was screwed. They're like, no, you're screwed. You yeah. live in the wrong part of the country. You can't take like these certain medications. Like, um, it was, it was, it was medications, uh, for like, uh, my fibromyalgia and stuff like that. Like certain things I couldn't take them. I had bad reactions. <sighs> And they were trying to get me to, you know, and he looked at my doctor, looked at me, you know, he's an Indian doctor. He's like, you're screwed. Like, like you're really like, there's nothing I could do for you. Yeah. Like but I'm at that's the what the modern doctors... medicine, you yeah. know, but if you look at the ancient medicine, it's different. Um, I like, I've literally, Oh my God, this is so bad. So I'm try. I tried to get into like a more regional pain clinic and they're they're like uh, I'm echoing. Is it me? Huh? Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Uh, you were getting into a pain clinic. Oh yeah, so I was trying to get into like a more regional pain clinic and to, instead of somebody more local, and the last person I saw was like what we offer you here is where we would offer you at the bigger pay clinic. And she's like, we have nothing left to offer you. You need to find a tertiary clinic, a tertiary clinic at a university connected research hospital. What? 
What in the fuck? Yeah. You either, need, you either need that or Wisconsin lettuce. Yeah, one or the other. So, uh, all because, uh, like, I can't take some the a lot of stuff. I There's a lot of stuff that just does not touch me. Like, virtually everything that I can take. Um, I mean, my spine is collapsed and my nerves are, are all crushed, so that doesn't help. But what I'm trying to do is get my, my, my base pain level taken care of before I even think about having the back surgery I need. Because I need that base level taken care of so I can take care of the excess pain afterwards. But in order to do that, like, they're like, well, you know, this is like your next step is surgery, but I need to be able to take care of the pain after the surgery. Yeah. And I, I live with chronic pain with, uh, you know, with myself, with, you know, having fibromyalgia, I deal with Lyme disease and I've had, you know, a couple back surgeries. Peaches, she didn't you know, call just you chronic pain. A couple, you know, a couple things, you know, and, and I have permanent nerve damage from, uh, from my back, from uh, the, the surgeries and needing surgery for seven years in between my two back surgeries. Um, and I have screws and rods in my lower back and L5, S1, my very bottom disc completely collapsed on itself. That's what's um, happened to me. And it sucks. And there's like, I, you know, even having had the surgery... I still deal with the pain. I and it, I it, I question it because I don't take any painkillers anymore. I used to take painkillers. Now I just take Motrin, and which you know, and even that I don't want to take that unless I absolutely have to. I try to take, I try to do everything alternatively that I can, but it's like you get stuck in, uh, you can get stuck in a perpetual pain cycle. Where it's really hard to break out of the cycle to see where your pain is even really at because when you're dealing with it every single day, it's it's, it's a ner neurolo day. it's a neurological rewiring of the brain, and it needs to go beyond just like you know just the regular pain management. It's got to start going into like uh oh god, what the hell is the magnetic stimulation thing called? Tens. No, it's for the brain. Oh. It's uh, electrical magnetic stimulation or something like that. Oh. Um. <sighs> Why not offer that to more pain patients? Because on it's top like a of like the thing, like brain. It's a, it's a brain yeah. stimulation, except using yeah. magnets. So it's a very. Uh -huh. It's a very low amount of uh, electricity. Mm -hmm. I see. It's like imperceptible, but yeah, it, like, I ha I have a tens unit, you know, like I haven't used it in years, but like a tens unit, I I can put the little sticky things. Jesus. Stop, on, bird, stop. Uh, I can put the little sticky things on and and zap myself with electricity, and you know, it sometimes would work, and and you know, it. it it but it 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 all still has an effect on you <laughs> yeah well this uh i'm gonna see if i can find it so this iris is asking who we have on as guests i just want to give her a quick update this is shelly I, I don't know if you've seen shelly before with us um she's in a lot of the chats and uh Super smart, super smart. We like share brain, and this is Snork down here with the green, the green screen behind him. And Snork is an amazing professor teacher. That I'm you know, not a professor. I have to well, be there seven more years. Well, working on being a professor is fast track to be a professor. Yeah, uh, he's. I call him my brain melter because he's vast amount of knowledge and yeah. always makes me you know go, stuff like, about things shit. and stuff <laughs> so guys uh need to know things about stuff and things <laughs> you'll definitely want to like rewind from the beginning and watch like we covered so much holy shit 
so much. every time nafta took a co company out i got to learn a new technology <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> that's fucked up that's weird but it's cool for you know for your own personal experience like all learning all sorts of different things like that do you want to come sit with mommy come on okay i'm sending you a link uh damn it where's the chat uh that TMS therapy I'm trying to tell you about. <laughs> I've been I've been actually thinking of I can't take a leave anymore. I've been actually thinking of trying uh, uh, Wisconsin lettuce. It's called uh, um, Latuca Verosa, uh -huh. and it's uh, it has a pain killing effect. Mm. <coughs> Is that wild <coughs> lettuce or? Yeah, it's a wild it's a wild lettuce. Yeah, I've heard about that. I want to try that too. I, I, I need to find some seeds to grow it. Yeah, I probably uh, need a lot of it though. Well, I don't know, but uh, I'm immune to a lot of anesthetics. I am too. I am too. I got that problem. Local anesthetics and everything. So if I, if I go to the dentist, they actually have to give me truth serum. <laughs> yeah, well, that was my problem trying to get my teeth taken out. Truth serum, like phenobarbital, fucking truth serum type shit. No, what's I, the other one called? Uh, nitrous. No, uh, maybe. Uh, pentobarbital. Is a different name. Yeah, pentobar pentobarbital. Yeah. yeah, probably the pento. Yeah, uh, my problem was I, I, you know, local anesthetics don't do anything for my pain, and then. They have to. They had to put me under, but I kept them getting told like, "Well, we don't put adults under for basic procedures." Right. And I'm like, "Well, you can't do do it with me wide awake." And then the problem was, um, like, I require like anywhere between two to four times the amount that a normal person requires for low uh, general anesthetic. Mm -hmm. And it and every time I go in for under general anesthetic, is always different amount that i need so it's never predictable so it's it took I me woke 10 years up. i woke up from uh like when i was supposed to be under for my back surgery i woke up i remember the operating room i remember like looking up i remember seeing my doctor like uh there was a cd player on the wall i mean this was like years yes. ago i yes. remember that and they asked me about it and they were like well, do you, do you, you know, like the nurse like asked me and then like just dropped the fucking subject, like was just like, all right, we're not going to talk about that again. Like, like, okay. Yeah. You know, like what, what happened? <laughs> I had that happen. Oh my God. The second oral surgery I had to get my, the, my remaining teeth removed. Mm -hmm. Uh, they had given me the same amount of anesthesia they gave me the first time around. Mm -hmm. I woke up in the middle of it screaming and writhing in pain while they're doing the procedure and they gave me they you know they gave me another dose of the same dose or the another round of the same dose didn't touch me gave me a third round like within minutes didn't touch me so they had to um uh just you know just do it as fast as possible just finish it as fast as possible. I had to go for surgery, surgery because they had they ended up leaving like two teeth in because they had to go that fast. Damn! Wow! Yeah, yeah. I when I had but the third um, time was fine. It, it, like no problem the third time. When I had Skyla, they gave me. Uh, so when I uh, I was in my car accident in two thousand and one, and then. Uh, I had a back surgery in 2002 and uh, my disc basically re like re herniated. Like they went in and they took out the part that was herniated out and they're like, okay, yeah, like we're just going to do that. We're just going to take the part that, that is pushing on directly onto your nerves and all that, that blew out. We're going to take that as from a car accident. And then, within like a month of having that surgery, the rest of the, of the fluid that was between my, my spine blew out and was then sitting on the nerves too, like all of it. So then uh, my, I was like disc to disc with no fluid between 
the discs and it was just rubbing raw like that for seven years. But well, I had, sir, I had, um, gone for childbirth. They had to induce me. Uh, this was in 2003 and, um, I, ha I was, ha I was having back labor and everything else. And they tried to give me the epidural. They're like, no, we really want you to have this epidural because of, you know, the fact that you have a herniated disc and you're having back labor and, and, you know, you're not doing pain meds or anything like you're doing this, like you need, you need to have this. So they go and they do the epidural for me and they're pumping me with Pitocin. So like my, I'm getting like my, like my body is like going, oh my gosh. Um, and they're like, okay, well we did it. And they're like, well, uh, you know, are your legs numb? I'm like, well, my legs mostly are like numb feeling most of the time anyway, because of the nerve damage that I had. And so I couldn't really, like I could feel, but it wasn't like, it's a weird sensation. It's like, you can tell that your leg is there, but you can't feel it in the same way that, that I can even before then. And then now after it's a lot different now, but, um, at the time, yeah, they gave me epidural. It didn't work. I found out later on that my cousin had three epidurals when they were giving her an emergency C-section and they, they did three of them and it didn't work. My dad, the same thing when he had, um, he was supposed to have an epidural, a spine block because they were doing like, um, they were taking out like half of his lung in surgery and they wanted to keep him like, you know, I guess just neck down completely numb but like you know like to keep him and they had to completely put him out they gave him like three of them and they, it just it wouldn't it wouldn't do anything like we we don't react to the epidurals or anything like that or the blocking agents the same way as other people it's really really weird like that 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 happened <laughs> and then i found that other stuff out like later on after well after I had, you know, already had Skyla and everything. You know, it's funny that you say that you had, uh, was it microdiscectomy that you had yep. done? Yep. Uh, early on. Now, I injured my back in 2002. And I was supposed to have a microdiscectomy uh, a little over a decade ago. But the surgeon I was referred to was... Um, uh, discriminatory against me because of my weight. He was like, oh, just, you know, lose weight, diet, blah, 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 and as soon as you <laughs> lose the weight, your pain is all gone. And I'm like, I've lost 80 pounds and the pain is worse. But <laughs> anyway, so my the neurosurgeon I've been seeing uh, about having back surgery, uh, they told me I was actually lucky not to get the microdiscectomy or else my back would have degenerated a hell of a lot faster than it has. I have, I have way scoliosis. Worse right now. Oh, I have yeah, scoliosis I guess. in my back. I have a curvature. It's pretty, I mean, it comes like straight down and then like it's a pretty, it's a pretty severe like curve out. Um, yeah, I got that out. too. And one leg's, you know, longer than the other. And my SI joint, I guess, you know, the, the first doctor, too, to tell me that the problem with my left SI joint is the injury from my back injury. And I'm like, yeah, that's why I tried to tell everybody. But they're, all they do is look at the weight and say, oh, osteoarthritis. And I'm like, no, I hit my hip on slate steps when I fell. Like, I know this is, like, I've had problems with this for 20 years. Same amount of time as my back. <laughs> but, yeah, it's it's crazy. i got to wait, like, 20 years just to get this information. Like, I knew what, I, what was wrong the whole time, and no doctor was listening to me. It's it's really frustrating. It's, it's really hard when, you know when the system is, you know, completely pinned against you and it's like, unless, unless you, you know, and then like, they'll judge you based upon like the, ju the doctor will, you know, Oh, well, what insurance do they have? Like it, it all comes down to class. 
you know, like even if you're lucky enough to live in a state where they have, you know, the health care that, that they, you know, pick up because at the time when, um, my first surgery and everything like that. I can't remember the exact cost of it. It was a lot of money for the first back surgery. I mean, they have to have a specialist come in just to, you know, help with the nerves because, uh, you know, like yeah. your, um, with your spinal, your spinal cord and all that. I mean, I remember I had, um, uh, like, I think it was a blue cross blue shield and it was through my ex husband, uh, sky's dad, and they lost it because they were like a smaller, like a ferry. They weren't really small, but like, you know, it was, uh, they, uh, he worked at a ferry and they got the bill and were like, whoa, what is happening? Like, you know, they were pissed and, 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 and they didn't even cover all of it. Like I, I was lucky enough that I had, uh, you know, a backup and a secondary insurance to cover that because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to get it. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. That's a whole other thing. But. Well, I, I, well, when I was 21, I, I broke my leg in two places and I had to have emergency surgery on it. I didn't have health insurance. I was 21. And, um, yeah, they actually kicked me out of the hospital if you like a couple days earlier than they should have. Uh, what happened was there was this huge snowstorm coming in, and they're like, "Oh, well, we need all the beds open for all the uh, kidney infection patients that are, are going to be coming in during the snowstorm." And my mom and I are just like, "What?" And I wasn't supposed to be—I wasn't supposed to leave the hospital until I knew how to. Not just walk in crutches, but also get down and up and down stairs in crutches because I lived in a two story home. And basically, what they did, they had me walking to uh, from my bed to the door and back on crutches. And I could do that, just barely do that. And they're like, you're okay to, you know, go home. So they, they drove me home in the middle of a blizzard and they could the transportation couldn't get up up my driveway because it's slanted so they had to carry me in a wheelchair up my driveway into the house from the bottom of my mom's driveway all because i didn't have health insurance it's crazy yeah i i have had some experiences Speaking of healthcare, um, Steve is going to be doing a sh um, doing a special fundraiser tomorrow with the Medicare for All, uh, with Savage Joy and Ricky Rance and uh, Jesse Jet's going to be on the show. Um, and do we have a link for that, Steve? Do you know? Well, we can put it. We can put it up. It's an ever bright thing, right? We'll have to find that and put that up there. Eventbrite? I'm, what? Yeah. Now you're quiet, like mumbly. I don't know how to find it. What? That's okay. We'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah, we will share that information out there to to let everybody know. Um, well, I don't know if everybody is on Twitter. I don't know either. I don't know. So what is this, the TMS? This is, wow, they use this, it's magnet? Okay, yeah, but it it's like uh, it's it's totally non invasive. Um, it's like very minimal energy. Uh, but recording in progress. It 
it like kind of changes the way your your um brain patterning is like like how um i think i'm like confusing a few different treatments too but there's something related to this that they use for like addiction and autism and stuff too but they also use this but um yeah it, it says up here that it's for major depression ocd or smoking addiction yeah but it depends on what no it, it was originally used for like mental other illness mental stuff. health issues yeah um but depending on the region of the brain that it shoots the you know it's um it's uh directed at like it can be used for pain and stuff you just have to shoot it at the right you know center of the brain but it like kind of helps with repatterning you know towards healthier brain connections that's really cool I mean, but there's like yeah. more updated versions of it too well, down here, they're listing it, and it says it's, they use it for PTSD, stroke rehabilitation, schizophrenia, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's, and chronic pain. Yeah. Yeah, and it's off-label treatment. <laughs> so that but it's up to the out of pocket. It's, I think it's all out of pocket. I don't know. There might be some insurance that covers it, but I'm pretty sure a lot all the ones that I know of are out of pocket. It's crazy. And the side, like the instance of side effects is like virtually nil. That's, that's crazy. I mean, how much, like, yeah, I mean, it would do, depend do on how know? much they've studied it. I mean, it's been studied for so many different things. Like, it, go on to PubMed sometime. And look up this and, you know, Google TMS and see what they've done to update it. They, they've got new forms of it now. Um, but, like, we could be just be using these machines for therapy instead of all these harmful drugs. Yeah. And that, you it's know, that true. is actually that is actually going to the core root of chronic pain. In it because it's a it's a cycle. It cycles between the, the nerve endings and the brain. And nerving you need something to break that and to just rewire your brain, so your body is perceiving it differently, or not perceiving it. I don't know. Yeah. Break the chronic cycle. Right. Provide some sort of inter interruption in between the 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 path that things follow right now with the chronic pain and you make some sort of interval, it's gotta, it's gotta relieve some of that and, and make it not so chronic. But you know, you're just treating the symptoms with drugs. I mean, I, I feel like a hypocrite talking about this, but honestly, I don't have the access to the things I need to try. And that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like if I could absolutely have a completely organic, natural diet, homeopathic, acupuncture, you know, like have a hot tub or be able to, you know, what I mean, have a nice soak and 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 and, and water that you know is healing for me, like you know, like the Epsom salt that helps. I do that. Um, you know, if I if I had it, I man, I I I would, you know, I would do. All of those things. But it's well, like you're in a you know, balance of struggle of like a class issue and, you know, just being able to try different things and the information exactly. that you have and, you know, like trying to be your own doctor at the same time. Or you got like, you know, stem cell treatments in Mexico where they take your stem cells and, you know, and then put them in the areas that need to need regenerating, like your spine or, you know, mm -hmm. your joint or it's, I'm too exhausted to try to remember everything, but I know this stuff exists, but it's only available in Mexico. The FDA won't clear it. I could so have a total, full head of hair if 
but no. You know, that technology, <laughs> that technology has been around and has been being used successfully for so long now, but the FDA is still declaring it experimental in this country because it hasn't been researched long enough. Yet they researched a CRISPR cow for, what, three years, and all of a sudden the FDA is passing it? It's all good. Oh, bullshit. It's all bullshit. Like, ugh. FDA, whatever. Fucking hate the FDA, man. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> I hate the for-profit system. I do too. I I really wish that it it could, you know, people could like get the care that they deserve. Everybody. Everybody. I want to fight for people that don't don't, you know, agree with me and don't follow my and like, you know. Medicare for all is a good start, but we need a system where it's not just allopathic. It's it covers alternative, and any alternative you want to try within reason. That's what it like. If be. I want if I want to go try low dose ketamine, I you know infusions. They, I should be like allowed to try that at least once. On yeah, their, why not on their dime? If I want to try. What what is transcranial magnetic stimulation going to do to be harmfully? The worst it could do is not work. Right. Go. So they cover PT. You know they cover PT for me for, for a year, and it's just made to be worse. But for the same or less, I could have tried trans, trans the TMS, and maybe that would have worked. You know. But the the thing is, is that it's the system is not set up or designed. To make you a healthy person It's no, designed no. the opposite way It's designed to Keep you in that perpetual Sickness where you're always a patient like, You're I, always going to need to come back You know going back to Cuba And like I said Mexico I, I would honestly I, I honestly Wish I had the money for a quote unquote Medical tourism yeah. Because, like, I honestly think that if I went to Cuba and Mexico, I probably have most of my shit taken care of already. Years ago, years ago. It's probably fair. And like I said, you know, Cuba had to work around, you know, the embargo, so their medicine, you know, evolved without capitalism. Without the profit motive in medicine, that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. And and, and look, for some reason, it's just completely obscene that pointing that out, pointing out the truth, is like. And you know, we're not obscene. special. We, what is the what is why is it such a big deal to like look at other countries and be like, I like this one thing they do. How about? We borrow that to make our country even better and more, you know, vibrant and more, you know, part of, you know, something that people want to be proud of. Hey, that's just <sighs> crazy enough to work. <laughs> well, it's like, you know, adopting, you know, uh, drug decriminalization. You know, start off with Portugal model and move on from there. And, you know, a lot of people think that decriminalization is just like a free-for-all, but... People it, are going to do what they're already going to do. Like they think, <laughs> they, think, they think the decriminalization movement is all about just making everything, le you know, legal to, to use and stuff. Just you know, just be done, done with all the laws at once. Now, I think that that should happen with pot and certain other plant-based stuff. But as or certain things like start off with the Portugal model, decriminalize it, and then work on from there to towards full decriminalization. But you need to have a system in place to c control for factors like quality and stuff like that. And yeah, of course, there has to be apparatus regulate, yeah, and yeah. regulation. Certainly, if you're going to legalize everything, then that means everything has to be, you know above board and there has to yeah. be standards and if ever, if there are standards and people are held to standards and then people could use their their drug that they fucking need to and 
and be totally functioning in every other way in society and beneficial to society. It's proven. Yeah, and it works. you know, a, a lot of Lowest these, crime. you know, a lot of these drug overdoses and stuff, and the horrible effects of these drugs is from them being black market. The adulterants, you don't know what's in them. Right. And I'm not There's even no talking about the. I'm not even talking about the drugs themselves, like the act. We don't know drugs. what's in the pharmacy meds that we, we don't take. know anything well, about. We don't know about the inactive ingredients, and you got people putting like baby powder and shit in the stuff. Right. You know, in the same it's, way that Pfizer yeah. is used putting shit in it, or it's the same exact thing. It's like we don't yeah. know what the fuck that is. But like, as far as like dosage and stuff, you're gonna see a hell of a lot of people dying from overdoses if they know exactly what they're getting, instead mm -hmm. of like. You know, like, well, you know, playing Russian roulette every time they shoot up. Well, yeah, that's the thing with the with you know people. But they don't not, want people to have um, total bodily autonomy either. Right. They used to have heroin over the counter. Of course they did. And yeah, right. there was some addiction, but it wasn't widespread. And it was, you know, it was every, readily available. Everywhere there's fucking oppression. An economic fucking yes oppression for people. There are spikes in drug addiction. It doesn't matter where it is. It doesn't matter when it is. And all across history, across time, this is this is a fact. You know what I mean? You're gonna. That's where you're gonna have things spike. So if they're like legal to begin with. And you expect these things, you know what I mean? It's like you can anticipate, you can do the preventative thing. That's the preventative thing instead of just like being reactionary and throwing everybody in fucking jail and criminalizing and, you know, generations of fucking men maybe just uh, don't do that and, and do a preventative measure and, and establish, okay, well, these are the things that you're worried about. Okay, well, let's make sure we regulate and control all of these things and give the people the access to it so that it's in a safe setting. Yeah. And then everybody is on the same page. You know what I mean? Like, you, you're not, you won't be surprised by some crazy thing that happened. What's going to happen? You're going to have fucking crime rates drop. You're going to have suicide. You're going to have fucking, you know, depression and mental illness. And you can handle more mental illness. You can teach about and inform the people about the drugs and the addictions that are, people are going through. And, and actually supply these people with love instead of criminality. And well, I, you know, I think, I, I think it's just a better approach. You've mm -hmm. got some, some countries like, like, um, let's say like Holland or something like that. And um, even the UK that they give heroin addicts, they give them pharmaceutical diamorphine. Yeah. Yep. And they give them, they're allowed a certain amount a day according to their own personal tolerance. They can't like max out on it. Like they can't just overdose no, from. Yeah. No, they have like a Pikachu test. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like the, the methadone clinic kind of thing. Sure. Yep. yep. And what happens is most of them voluntarily go off of it within like a year. Mm -hmm. And I think all of them eventually just stop taking it after time. So here's the thing. It's like a system designed to get you off that motherfucking bus, man. You well, can you, you can jump off. But we're yeah. honest. We are coming at this from an approach of where we want people to do better and we want people to be healthy. The system is not made that way. It's not designed that way. No. It's not set up that way. So we need like we need to look at how we can make the system work for us and how we can change that. You know, yeah. and, and that's what we need to look at because. Okay. But it's like we can borrow little pieces from other countries here and there. It's not th like okay, so the general philosophy of the founding of the United States, just the philosophy. I'm not talking about actual history. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> because that's a fucking clusterfuck. Uh, <laughs> but the general philosophy is a good one to work with. It's it's a good base to work from. We we can we can like ask some stuff. We can we can borrow from borrow little pieces from here and there that have been shown to work. And we can make this country so much better. And we can actually like 
We could be we could be proud. We could we actually, can actually be proud. <laughs> be a good example of what to, to for other countries to do instead of being like, well, yeah, we we're the best democracy, so we have to bomb it into other countries. No, yeah, that's not the do- way to do it. There was a point in time where you know, America did have top leading scientists we were the leaders in different sciences and stuff and where the hell is that it's capitalism it's so bad. that's where it is yeah, i mean like okay, capitalism did, just completely okay it, capitalism it it, did break. shook it up and it smothered it and said no i mean a lot of good innovation did come from capitalism out of shitty practices, but I'm saying just the general sphere of inventions and scientific curiosity and that passion for it and people coming from all over the world because they were free to explore ideas. Um, like, what happened to that? It's very hard to explore ideas when you don't have money. So you, you need to have the knowledge you need to have some type of initiator. Often, a lot of people come up with the same invention about the same period of time because some trigger event, something they saw, all happened about the same time. Yeah. So if you don't have something that gave you the idea, and usually it's a problem. So you need something to get done. Uh, we need to have knowledge to do it. But most often... If you're working, I'm <laughs> zipping away. If you're working 24 hours a day and you've got no time to think, you've got no time mm-hmm. to do anything, and you don't have money to buy even the simplest materials, you're not going to invent anything, uh, or at least very low chance of having it happen. So ten, it tends to be that we need to have people wealthy enough to have an interest in something and to. Well, know we do. Well we have Bill that. Gates, right? We have Bill Gates yeah. that does that. I agree with that idea. Fundamentally, but I think also on the other end of it, there is there's the place where these people have no money and no fucking means at all, and they have a they have a need to be met, and that's where that's where innovation takes place. But the people more that often than somebody tinkering, something done without a lot of money, they have something that can be done without a lot of money. So right. if it's a, a new way to wrap a bubble gum wrapper, hey, that doesn't take any money. It's something they can do. If it takes a piece of technology to build another piece of technology, they don't have the money to buy the, the equipment to do it. It's not going to happen. And I think there's two different. Be- I think there's two different approaches there, though. Like if that, like I'm saying, is you if you have just the limited things, but you have a fucking dire need to solve a problem, your chances are you're going to figure out how to solve that problem with the, within the means that you have. It may well, not it, be it the most. It may how- not be the most. You know, technological revolutionary thing, but it, you know what I mean. It, it seems if it's to a, serve if it's a new uh, way to coma coma horse. It, it's something that you can provide. It's a lot different than something that needs money to get it done. So there's a lot of people that have ideas. They can get things done, and most of the people have already worked with that areas have already developed materials like that for so often that the easy fruit has already been picked. So it gets harder and harder to find something that you can do without without money. And when it comes to the new, newer technologies, it is so much money to, to, do, to do so little uh, that uh, in order to get caught up, it can take 10 years for people to learn everything about electronics. Uh, mm-hmm. Not everything, it's just a little bit enough to, to, to learn something. But to actually come up with a new, a new thing and have the next stage, Ten to twenty thousand dollars to apply for a patent, and then during that time you're not making any money. Then you have to get it arranged. It's very, very expensive to get get things out there, and uh, it's it's a major problem that we can give we can give a, a company that's already making billions. We can give them ten billion dollars to offset the cost of their drilling, but we can't give people that are trying to figure out how do they have enough technology just to be able to do simple things, to do simple investments, we don't provide people that aren't billionaires already money. It's crazy. That's the thing I was, that's what I was getting at, is like the people 
who don't have any of the money but have all of these weird technological shortcomings where they are and they're trying to figure out how to bridge the gaps between what they have at their disposal and you know what could be made that just seems like innovation is just is just bubbling right there waiting to fucking happen if there was a dollar to be fucking spent on it you know what i mean if any anybody had the the insight to invest in these people who are who but are the, struggling to do these things to solve these problems with no fucking money you know what i mean but it just you seems know like coupling coupling those two things together would be the makes the most sense to me at this point but you know you know innovation goes well past um just technology well, yeah. and just the way we do ancient things like just innovating innovating a new way of farming for example um although you know it, it is technology but not in the sense that we're talking like start moving back to other you know more oh, i don't know how to explain it like looking back like looking more in more into nature again for innovating with technology with like i think there's there's more that could be done in that er arena but you know i think a lot of the people who are who are into like the hard sciences now are, are pretty divorced from you know nature and philosophy yeah. to degree completely i'm not saying <laughs> all of them i'm not saying all of them there's some that are all in on philosophy like cornell university they're they're physicists and stuff um it, there's like the, the philosophical hard science like the philosophical um department of the hard sciences and then there's like the hard science hard science like the the uh, on hand um scientists but it's on the same campus so you got a lot of meshing up ideas you got a lot of the scientists that are like that overlap so like i think i, I mean i think that's more of a um as far as hard, hard sciences go i think that's a better way of developing things but you know it's cornell university there's it's really hard to get into <laughs> yeah i would i would love to see um more 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 um interest in their lectures and stuff yeah i i am actually going to start following their podcast because i found out i found out some interesting stuff about the physics department <coughs> what was it that uh was it that one that you that you sent me the link to the other day and i said i'd listen to it uh and ethica yeah, it was. Um, it was like about wasn't it? Was about like the consumerism and then like you know targeted. Uh, oh, um, oh, was it Cornell or or Colgate? No, I almost think it was from Colgate Colgate University. Their 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 research center of like basically social engineering. <laughs> yeah, because. It so Colgate, I always get the two con the new two names uh, a little confused because Cornell has extensions in this area. Cornell University is in Ithaca, which is like about an hour and a half from me. Uh, Colgate University is actually ten minutes from me in um, Hamilton, New York. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like the, it's own little uppity enclave <laughs> and like a sea of like farmland. But uh, Colgate is the liberal arts university, so it's like more of it, like sociology and anthropology and stuff like that, social engineering, <laughs> mass mind control. <laughs> like going into like looking into that research center, I was like, what the fuck. It's like Rick next door. <laughs> yeah, that one was crazy, but um, Colgate University has uh, a beam accelerator, and they do like accelerator and particle collider stuff. Yay. Um, they have. I gotta find out what the name of it is. It's um, and it's really close to you, and that's like mm -hmm. maybe an hour and a half, maybe a little bit less for me. That one is, is in Ithaca. The liberal arts one, the Colgate University, is 10 minutes from me. 
but um let me see if i can find this research center the name of it i was like um say what let me see uh, oh here about steve you sent an emoji on there that wasn't me sorry he does that sometimes i'm like wait a minute i didn't type anything <laughs> research okay well, that I know, Peaches is. And it, it was like blue, ble blue, or was it like. It just reminded me of Blue Beam, the name of it. Blue Beam. And it, it's like a. It's like a research center for. Um. I was like gonna drive me nuts. I know. I totally am drawing a blank on there right now. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> the marmot the marmots in the collider. And the marm the marmot the marmots are in my brain. They are. <sighs> but yeah, they they're connect with CERN too. It's crazy how yeah. Yeah, if you guys didn't watch from the beginning, you got to watch from the beginning because we talk about the CERN uh, that they turned on with the particles and, you know. Hadron colitis. Yeah, the had hadron colitis. <laughs> yeah, hadron. Jesus. Well, we're going to have to find, we're going to have to cover that, uh, that, Anyway, a different day, um, Shelly. Yeah. But, like, I definitely want to get into, yeah, the Colgate. I think it was the Colgate. Oh, she bumped out. Um, the college. She sent me this this um, thing on Twitter, and I listened to their podcast, and I was, like, completely blown away by uh, the way that they have an Entire department geared towards, um, oops, <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> I was just saying, like, we had there, Don't click that one. I did click that one. <laughs> it was a, it was a, it was a podcast that I listened to, and I cannot remember that. Oh my gosh, we'll have to find that link and we'll, we'll post it. Um, you can tell we're getting punchy. Yeah, I'm getting tired. Uh, yeah. Well, I have I have the link to the research center. It's just on my phone, and I have to go through all my bookmarks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we will we will definitely we'll be doing. So that too. you know what you know what we'll have to do is uh um have like a shared. <laughs> want, Iris wants us to explain. <laughs> Um, we're gonna have to do a, like a shared Google Doc and like just put links in there of all the like dorky sciencey stuff we do our research into. I know, right? <laughs> like, oh my god, look at I just found. <laughs> hey, but just have it just in one one document instead of a chat. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's we're just exclusive to the links. Um, yeah the the pod the podcast they were talking about like like why how people spend their money and whether or not like if it matters if it's like a debit card or cash and it whether they spend it whether they eat healthier and how the they market that towards for you and everything basically like, it ways to manipulate the the public psyche into molding them to do the things you you think is healthy and best for them like it, it's also it's like a social engineering research center. <laughs> yeah, they were talking, and, and at the end of it, they talked about food stamps, about um, like if you used cash versus a debit card versus food stamps, like what, like who ate healthier, like who purchased healthier food. So yeah, we're gonna have to we'll have to cover that and and cover into that a little bit. Like well, it was. Luckily, really 
luckily I live 10, 15 minute drive from Colgate University where the social engineering place is. <laughs> so maybe I'll be able to look into the, the campus library. I think I think the public can still go into public into uh, campus libraries. That would nice. be interesting. So I, I can always try. <laughs> Get some of that up close social engineering, you know. I don't think I can check anything out because I'm but I think I could go in and like check out the books, like look at the books and stuff, do research well, there. Reference materials. Yeah. I'm sure you could bribe somebody, you know, like come on. What could I possibly bribe as a college student with? Like, well, just share we share it, it, man. Share share the maybe knowledge. maybe I'll just uh, start hitting on the professors. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> They'd be like, ew, what the hell, man? Get away from me. <laughs> what do you are you a walking fed? like you walking like you're supposed to be there? Are you a fed? <laughs> Why do you, you keep asking so many questions? Are you my personal FBI agent? <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm so happy to finally meet you. <laughs> Nice to meet. Oh, so Iris, nice to finally meet you after all this time. Iris ah. said that she has a personal connection to Colgate. Obviously, history revisionist is at its finest. Obviously, I'd like to know what her connection is. Hmm. Give up, give up the goods, Iris. The only connection <laughs> I have to Colgate is I used to brush my teeth with that when I was little. Yeah, with fluoride toothpaste. That's right. Clogging up that pineal gland. Well, you know what's boy. funny? What's funny is uh, Norwich, you know, Norwich Pharmaceuticals has been around since the late 1800s. They invented Pepto Bismol. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there, like, I I was telling my mom today, I'm like, I have to go to the Shenango County Historical Society and start doing research on, on, on Norwich because, like, just the few things I know about the area already fascinating and i just feel like there's like something really cool and deep going on here with their history as far as like is that anywhere near um uh, mohawk valley yes i'm on the edge of the mohawk valley uh i went to art school in the mohawk valley i went well i went to munson william proctor institute for the fine arts part and then i had to do all my um gen ed courses at mohawk valley community college right on yeah, I and just saw I, I just saw a video yesterday of a guy finding like the biggest fucking Herkimer like ever found. It, oh, the yesterday. Herkimer diamond. Yeah, huge. Yeah, huge. I saw that. Oh my god. Well, I'm in a rock hounds group. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, yeah, I think he posted to the. I think he posted that Facebook group, and we're like, holy shit. He was live <laughs> yesterday when the dude found it. Was like, holy. Yeah. Incredible. So, um, Herkimer Diamond Mine isn't too far from me either. This, the place that they found it is like, but it's, it's like the most. It's a hundred dollars for the day. Steve's like, that's yeah. not that bad. I'm like, yeah, but they, if you start adding that up for yeah, per person, right. that's a you lot have of money. Like bionic fucking, like, but if you Roy just, well, there's people, there's people we'll that make it. jewelry around here that they, you know, if they already have the tools, it you know a day and you know a day admission for one person with our, its tools already is a hell of a lot cheaper to go mining for the diamonds than it is to buy them from somebody. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it's like a million times cheaper, and all it is is quartz. Yep, it's just a special kind of quartz. I don't know what's special about it. It's just cool. It's very clear. I, well, it's a, I, there's something about the quartz where you can only find it in the Herkimer area. Yeah, the there's Herkimer only region. a couple of areas. It's, it's like where water it's clear. Too. Okay, it's so like the, the most clear ones. So the people, this guy that found this giant, because he shows other big finds that he finds, he said there is a mine near the Herkimer diamond mine. That I think you need like permission from the landowner to go on there, but I guess, or either that or it's like state land, something like that. But there's like, um, like a lesser known mine near the big Herkimer diamond mine where you can find a house. I think that's the spot where he got that. It's like not too far, but it's like lesser known. 
yeah, this one was like, you know, it cost you a hundred dollars. It's, it's a tiny little mining company called, uh, Mohawk Valley mining company. In fact. Oh, you didn't go to the, the, the Herkimer, uh, diamond mine. No, no, this is from, from the video that I was watching yesterday. That's where they, oh. that's where they scored it from them guys from that property. So here's what which isn't we're even the big, about the big one. Herkimer. You know what I mean? It's like, that was, that was cool. It's fucking huge though. Like, holy crap. Yeah. Herkimer diamond mines. Like if you can find lesser known diamond mines in the region, go there. If yeah. you hear about them being found in different, you know, you know places other than the Herkimer diamond mine, go there, like follow all the, the rock groups and stuff to upstate New York rock groups. And you'll be able to find them and you'll yeah. find more and you'll find bigger ones. Cause mm -hmm. Herkimer diamond mine has been around for, my whole Forever. life. Yeah. <laughs> well, as, as far as, as I can like remember, a, as as far as like a diamond mine that you can go into, pay a mission, and like take out what you want, it's been a, it's been as an attraction. Yeah. It's been around yeah. my whole life and lo Holy way shit. longer than that. Yeah. Look at Ever this. Wait, 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 wait. Look, a two night stay at a KOA resort for her a mission to four Herkimer diamond mines, four sluice bags. Hundred dollar restaurant voucher, three hundred dollar shopping spree at Trading Post. It's, uh, one thousand eleven dollars. Yeah, see, that's 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 a trendy like little fucking thing to do. Ever since I saw the Grateful Dead the first time in nineteen eighty three, I've known people that have gone to Herkimer and the surrounding area and fucking mined diamonds and sold them on lot and. Oh made, yeah. Make crazy fucking money. You can set. You can go mine diamonds and sell them for cheap and still make bank on them. Oh yeah. I, my, the buddy, my buddy, my used to walk around with. My buddy used to walk around with one that was like a, a softball size. It was bigger than a softball in my hand, and you know, it was like, anybody want to buy a Herkimer? You know what I mean? And people the, would just like, they just the rage these fucking things. The markup on. The, uh, the Herkimer diamonds are insane. And the further away you get from the Herkimer diamond mines, the more expensive they are, obviously. Yeah. Um, I had friends in the early 2000s in the UK that um, would like flip out when they found out how close I am to Herkimer diamond mines. I'm like, yeah, I, I've had people just randomly give them to me. Yeah. This one's $16 per person for 13 and up. Yeah. You're probably not going to find much. <laughs> That's how I'm like, you, if you plan on it and you're like really going to, you're really going to bust your ass to try to find some fucking shit. There's, there's well. other places well. you can go. There's other, um, thing rocks you can be looking for that are actually kind of cooler. Um, but yeah, I was just, that was just, you know what you want to do? Uh, go to the neighborhood. Cool anyway. If you if you want to go to the Herkimer Diamond Mines and like actually save and have a better time camping out, go to the neighboring county that's like half state forest, and you're allowed to camp out there. Anywhere in there, there's just rules you have to follow. Basic rules. Right. Uh, you know you don't have to pay to camp out there, and you just, you just be careful. You know, just be mindful of what you're doing when you're camping. That's it. I think it's like uh, you, you can't have a, a party over a certain amount of people, um, say, for over a certain amount of days. Like, it, it it's pretty, uh, as far as, like, state land and the forest around here is it, the rules are pretty relaxed and you don't have to pay anything <laughs> you just don't have amenities like camp campgrounds that's cool no camp yeah. for you. i don't need amenities uh i have the van and i set it up and it's like basically like a small rv but yeah you could definitely do that here <laughs> get lost <laughs> But you know, oh, there's also um also uh in the state forest here is uh Wolf Mountain, where you can go see wolves and stuff, and coyotes, and I think they got some uh mountain lions. It's it's basically uh re a rehabbed, I think uh 
wildlife that they can't release. That's cool. Yeah. Cool. It's a hell of a lot cooler to do that and a lot cheaper. You get to see more stuff too. <laughs> when I was a little kid, we used to, uh, my, my parents would take us all over the place and we went to like all these little places like, uh, in New York and, and Massachusetts, uh, Edaville Railroad and Gaslight Village and uh, yeah, the How Caverns. Uh, yeah, well, I Oneonta's a half hour. Uh, Oneonta is like 20, 25 minutes from How Caverns. So yeah. I grew up with that. I actually went, um, here, I funny story, I used to be a youth for Christ, <laughs> but um, like, what. I was in I was in Youth for Christ. <laughs> youth for Christ. Yes. Uh but we had summer um we had summer um trips we went on to and one summer we went we went spelunking right uh right by How Caverns, but it was in How Caverns. It was like on a on some farmland nearby. Neat. So it was I mean you could get permission to to go cave dwelling down there, but it it, it had one part called the corkscrew, and I got stuck, <laughs> and I panicked. It, it was called the corkscrew for a reason, so I think that's what um, triggered my claustrophobia for me. <laughs> but I've also been to How Caverns. How Caverns is really cool too. But I remember I mean, that vividly, like being a little kid on the boat in the in the in the How Caverns, and yeah, like, and they've expanded it. Skin, like you're gonna fall over the waterfall, and it's this scary moment. Yeah, and stuff. oh, that was great. They they've expanded it, and um, they've opened up more of the caverns, and they have the Native American Muse the Iroquois Museum, I think. Nice. I think it's the, I think it's the Iroquois Museum, and. Then they have the geo break, and you can get you can break geodes there. Yeah, have you seen that one? There's a, I want to say it's North Carolina, maybe, or or something. But it's like caverns, kind of like the How Caverns, but it's this massive cavern oh, and they put on yes. I've they heard have, about that place. They have mad shows and they're it's fucking intense. You're inside a fucking giant cave uh watching a rock concert and you know the <laughs> amazing, you know, a natural amphitheater but underground. Yeah, that's uh that's something I would love to go to experience for myself. Yep. And you know that kind of brings me right back to, you know, the whole ancient ancient people uh, talk because you have all those underground cities in Eastern Europe yeah. and in Turkey from like millennia before like ancient Rome. <laughs> yeah. And those were a cave, but they were like madman caves, but they're like, oh, we don't know how they did it or why. And that's that. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. We can't explain it, so we can't explain it. Yeah. I, li I like the explanation of, well, <laughs> Because we can't we can't verify something or we have no explanation for it. Well, it must be a hoax, right? Like something that giant is a hoax. Are you fucking kidding me? Mm -hmm. Call the fact checkers. Oh, like so all those um, uh, ink and uh, my what was it? I think the ink and stones in Peru. Uh, they had the carvings of um people with dinosaurs that they're given to this doctor. Yeah. The natives were given to this doctor as the things for helping the, and they would just bring them the, all these stones. It was like something over like 30,000 stones, maybe even more than that. And they're saying like the whole village like, or the most ridiculous one theory is that this guy, um, this native, you know, native local, uh, Fake these over the course of I don't know how many years it was like thirty or forty years, <laughs> and it just and it was like tens of thousands of them. Yeah. And he somehow was uh, so good at it that it mimicked carbon dating, like correct carbon dating, and like, it's like 
are you fucking serious? He is really good, you know. Yeah, so he's really he good. Wicked good. One of the but, best. But, you know, the. <laughs> One of the best and pro most prolific because if you make ten thousand of them in a fucking lifetime. What the fuck, man? Yeah, he's really, really good at the it. Guy's he, on point. The, that's that's so, his. That's his grift. Like he's just yeah, he's on but, that. But who's to say? Like you know, the Amazon was the type of uh, environment that dinosaurs thrived in. Mm -hmm. So who's to say? Maybe they did live longer in the Amazon that we know about. We, I have a pterodactyl like right next to me. Yeah, it's sitting right there. The well, the the B I R D. I don't want to say his name because it'll like wake yeah. all up. We'll he, look at chickens they, too. They're 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 related. <laughs> exactly. They're dinosaurs though. Uh, but I, I'm talking parrots are dinosaurs. I mean crocodiles and stuff are too, but I'm saying like the triceratops and stuff that they had in these pictures. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. No, uh, but I'm saying I mean I'm saying it, it's totally, more likely than not because totally he's likely. a dinosaur. Yeah. But maybe and, they did survive up until like say like five thousand years before Europeans ever settled there. Well, I, I have a theory. I think uh they Basically, everything has looped at least once since they turned on the CERN and every, and all the rest of all the rest of the particle accelerators all got on board and started vibrating at the correct frequency. Oh and well, everything looped again. So you know what I mean? There's there's like there's dualities and and uh, and stuff occurring. So in some places, sure, you had stegosauruses walking around with your flamingos. You know, and it's just Gen nor a normal thing. General Meow Meow said that mammoths were roaming in herds not that long ago. You could have mammoths. Yeah. You could have bisons on top of secret labs. You you know, anything is possible right? in, in this realm. Tie back to the bison that, that Snork told us about, the, the bisons that are the, the, the canaries in the, in the CERN thing. <laughs> All right. I think we should wrap this sucker up. Put a bow on it. Yeah, because yeah. I want to start getting into theories about CERN and the Mayans. Yeah. And yeah. don't even get me started on the Mayans. Because okay, well, you know, I just want to I just want to throw this out. Uh, CERN <laughs> was for our the LHC, LHC, uh, large, large Hadron Collider was first turned on in twenty uh, two thousand ten. But it actually didn't go fully operational until 2012 when the God particle or the Higgs boson was discovered. Boson. Shout out to the bosons. So, the hey, maybe the LHC is just to power us into the next um, the next cycle of life. Yeah, the next loop. Yeah. The I next air. The, the next aeon. <laughs> <laughs> Next flux. Oh man, you never fucking know, man. <laughs> you guys are talking about Ron Hubbard. You guys yeah. are gonna get me going uh, down. The yeah, that's, thing. that's a huge ass rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to do that. That's a different. That's a different. Yeah. That's a different uh, night. Yeah, that's oh, a different. Really? Top, that's a whole different episode. Um. All right, so we're wrapping this up, but this is remember this is always just a continue continued conversation because the, we will always come back to these topics. And thanks for hanging out with us. People. Plus, there's like 10 million new things in the news every fucking day. Not it's always going to be a continued stuff. conversation. That's right. <laughs> yep. Um. And see, yeah, then General Meow Meow. I love that picture, by the way. Mammoth tusks were picked up in mass graves in Alaska for ivory trade. Natives talked about how not long ago they still saw them. That's yep. amazing. Oh, we love you guys. Um, so, Snork, is there anything that you wanted to plug? Um, I <laughs> We're not you're not snork. You're not snork. You want to <laughs> you want to come over here to say good night? I think that's what it is. <laughs> he was sleeping. Oh, come, come here. You want? Oh, he's like, no, oh, I'm just tired. He's just tired. You want to go night night? Oh. He goes. <coughs> 
like that and sticks his crust up at me. <laughs> so, well, Guinness, right. Guinness, Guinness has been passed out on my bed ever since we got home today. <laughs> if she we get, if she gets so stressed out at my mom's house because oh of the other dogs and the cats and yeah, it it devolves into general chaos. And all she wants, she just wants to get along with them and play, but she does not understand that she's way bigger than they are. <laughs> play, 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 play. I know. I feel so bad for her. Oh. Well, thanks everybody for hanging out with us. Um. Uh, so, Snork, do you, is there anything that uh, you no, have going no. on, where you want to? No, I, I, I wanted to finish a book this this summer, and I haven't been able to do anything. This is this is the longest I've been awake for a long time. Uh, oh. But, oh wow! So, get you some rest. Well, we appreciate you coming and hanging out with us. You know, you're welcome to come on anytime. You always. So I, I always feel smarter and stupider every time. I'm like, God damn. <laughs> I have so many more questions that will like come to my mind. And I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta ask Snork this. <laughs> yeah. I wish I'd had more experience in other areas, but uh, uh no, I well, I'm, I'm freaking I love it. I love it. <laughs> Peaches is like, shut the fuck up. Is this over yet? Let's go. <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> we love you, Snore. Thank you, guys. Good night. And Shelly, they Thank can you, Shelley. find you on uh, on the, the tweeters. On the tweeters. On the pages. tweeters. Yep. At Poison Alice. There we go. I move the thing that way. That's there. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta start uploading my um, photos to like my Red Bubble. And uh, my deviant art and stuff. So I'll, I'll be starting doing that soon. So I'll have some more stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Share we'll, it, be Cheryl. Doing, we'll be doing more shows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're not. We're not done. He, this is not the last you'll see of these two. Nope. <laughs> and I just want to put out there that um, I asked Vanessa <laughs> Bealy. Hey, hey, you're not. You you don't. I asked for this Billy to come on the show. Um, and after I had a conversation with, with uh, Drew uh, last night. And uh, so she's going to come on and do a show with us. And uh, we should be having Commander X come on pretty soon, too. So look yeah, out for that. Awesome. And um, I'm totally I'm excited for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Awesome times. So we uh, love y'all. Please hit the like button and share it. You know, retweet it, share it to your other social media, <laughs> tag a friend, whatever. If you missed the beginning, go back and watch it. Yeah, we'll please rewind. Time. It was a really awesome, oh, awesome God. conversation. We'll see you next time. <laughs> All right. I'm going to play the little thing and then All I'm right. going to go out. Peace out, Bye, guys. Night, John Boy. Night, <laughs> I jump you cuts through my right. neighborhood. Somehow that always just made me feel good And I can put a spare bulb in my hand Light up my yard Late at night when the wires and the walls Sing in tune with the din of the falls I'm conducting it all while I sleep To light this whole town